Okay, we are here at the Koken Woodford Glen Speedway for the 2021 Modified Championship. I'm your host, Aaron. And I'm Vince, and it's a beautiful sunny day here. We have 30 of the best modified drivers here that are ready to race for the New Zealand title, and it's going to be absolutely epic. What do you reckon, Aaron? Yeah, mate, th we have been waiting for this. Obviously, the event was moved from uh, in February down here to March. Everyone has still made it. 30 cars to go out on the track and entertain you guys over the next couple of nights. It's going to be amazing. It sure is. And first of all, we would like to thank Jason Gutteridge and the team from Pits TV for having us. It's great to be able to team up and bring you this show. So tonight you'll be seeing a few other things and lots of stuff from behind the scenes as well as all the action on the track. So get ready for that. It's coming at you and it's going to be excellent. It certainly is, mate. So, yeah, so, look, there's been lots of form. There's been lots of happening in the modified class up until this point this season. So this is what it all culminates to. And this is actually the last New Zealand championship. So all the rest of them have kind of got been through the summer. And um, this is the last one. And in our opinion, it's going to be the best one. But we'll see what happens out there on track. Yeah, no, I, well, we're a little bit biased because we have been following the Modifieds for a couple of years. We're very passionate about them. That's that's why we're here in front of you today. Um, we're going to be bringing you um, lots of stuff about the Modifieds. Um, and so it's, it's, really, it's really the intro to the New Zealand chat. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, uh, Aaron, it's been, a, it's been a hot day all day today. The sun's been beating down on that track. You know a bit more about um, Speedway in general than I do. What sort of effect does that have on a track? Are we going to see some good nights uh, racing? Yeah, so I was having a little bit of a chat to the track guys a little bit earlier and um, and they put a heap of water on the track last night, but the sun has been beating down. So the one thing when you're racing with this class is, is the condition of the track, how much moisture is in it. Um, whether the track slicks up because some of the drivers are really good on a slick track but if it slicks up on the inside and has a bit of grip on the outside some of the drivers are more competent on the outside as well so then you throw the other factors from Woodford Glen in here so you can't see it from the cameras at the moment but I know the Pits TV will be sending the drone up later this track is actually an egg shaped track so turns one and two are kind of wide and sweeping and then they go down the back straight to turns three and four and in turns three and four it's a little bit more of a sharp bend so it really comes down to how you set the balance up of the car all of that sort of thing you can either set it up for one and two or specifically for three and four or get it nicely balanced out then you've got the track conditions, whether it's slick, whether it's grippy. All these drivers have different techniques, different ways of setting up their cars, setting up the shocks. Yeah, and Vince, honestly, this is why this class is so exciting because there are so many options and, and things that these drivers can do in terms of getting out there to win this, this championship. It could literally be any of the 30 drivers that we see out there tonight. That's right. There is a plethora of techniques that they can use and they do use. But um, do you want to talk a bit about the drivers? I mean, I mean, we've got some excellent drivers here. We have, of course, the 1, 2, and 3 NZ. We've got Brad Lane, the reigning champion, who's 119H from Huntley. And then we have 2 NZ, Blair McPhee. And he is from Wellington. He's actually the only Wellington car here tonight, so he holds the flame for them. And then we have 3 NZ and former New Zealand champion, Luke Brown. Now, we're going to be talking to 1, 2, and 3 NZs um, shortly a bit, in a bit more detail, but I tell you what, the Christchurch drivers, they may have a bit of a home track advantage. As you said, it's a very unique track, and they have some real hard charges. And amongst those names, I'm not going to list all of them because we don't have time, but I just want to start with 4C Michael Gawley. Now, as you know, last season we had a modified Super Series. He came up to Wellington and he absolutely blitzed the field and absolutely smashed it. He was absolutely incredible. And he has been having an excellent season this year. He's podiumed um, a few times already. And I'm sure we'll be having a talk to him tonight because he's going to be winning some races, I would assume. What do you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. Although in the last event that we had here, he did have a little bit of a tumble. But the good thing is he got that chassis into Raceworks there. Shout out to Jake Hack has got the car all straightened out and I see that those guys have definitely pulled their trailer into the into the facility tonight so they're definitely racing. Another Christchurch driver that you should be looking out for is a 24C at Dan Ray. Um, he's got Fulton Hogan all over his um, modified so you won't miss him. He is an absolute hard charger here but then Moving on from him, we've got the likes of Steve Sinclair and a few other locals here that are just oh, the, the, the talent in this area. And I know that the hometown boys are really, really pumped to try and bring this title back down south. So uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, 
So it's going to be uh, an extreme battle, that's to say, to say the least. But we also have, let's not forget, 11A, Jamie Fox. Now, this guy, I've been looking through driver stats, and he just pops up time and time again. He's had four New Zealand titles, which is the most out of any driver in New Zealand. And he has podiums. I've lost count, to be honest, and I think he has too. But what do you what do you reckon his chances are on, on this sort of track? Because we had a bit of a chat to him um, before, so so yeah, a one line wouldn't really suit him. But I reckon he's he's going to stand a chance tonight, right? Yeah, well, Jamie is. Yep, and um, Jamie is very very good on the outside line, and um, so so that's definitely an advantage to him. I know he had a little bit of a tough start to the season, so what uh, what he's been doing is just getting everything sorted out, slowly building throughout the season. Actually went away to Rongarei, um last weekend and um, took a win there. So so yeah, I think maybe peaking at the right time, but with four titles under your belt. Geez, that experience is definitely going to pay off out there on the track. That's right. So we've talked a little bit about the drivers and we're going to hear a lot about them uh, throughout tonight and tomorrow night. So definitely don't forget to tune in tomorrow night where the final events will be happening. So that's going to be um, one to watch and I'm definitely looking forward to it. But um, the modified class, we've been involved for a couple of years now and it's one of those um, one of those classes which might not be the most popular in terms of um, on, in terms of well, popularity, basically. <laughs> but, but why? Is it, why do we? Articulated, Vince. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I knew you'd pull me up on that. You're always good for that. <laughs> no, but um, do you want to tell us? It's because it's your story, mate. Why did we get involved in modifieds? And well, and then I'll tell you. I'll tell everyone why I love them. Yeah. So my little girl went to kindergarten with the um, with the daughter of a modified driver, and um, and he kind of hit us up for a little bit of sponsorship involved. We went along to the track. We did a bit of sponsorship for the 17W Jonas England. And what we said is we started a media company, so we want to get in behind the scenes, and that's the condition of the sponsorship. As many of you people know that's involved in Speedway out there as a spectator, out here in the pits helping out with the teams, this sport's pretty addictive. And once you get in behind there and see absolutely everything that's going on, this sport is absolutely incredible. So that's how we got involved, and um, and we're just building and building and building on what we're what we're trying to do here, and um, and the amount of fun that we have is is really really good. Yeah, as Aaron said, the modified class is absolutely incredible. As is Speedway in general. We've been invited to people's um, homes, into their garages, to look at how things are done, and there's certainly so much that goes on behind the scenes. Not only is there the driver, but they've got a whole crew that come on the night, plus their family and friends, and every night at a speedway like this tonight there's hundreds of volunteers and I tell you what mate these drivers they aren't just amateurs they're, they're basically running small businesses for their teams because they go out and get sponsorship and they cover the um, they cover all the costs for their racing for every night mate they have a lot of stuff to do and one of the things I love most about speedway is that you can get in at a very entry level so you can spend a little bit but then you can spend a lot and we have some guys that um, have successful businesses and they use that to pump the funds in and they have a great time but equally those the guys um, just at the beginning of their careers and modifieds, they're able to get in there and have some fun and keep up with those hard charges too. What do you reckon? Yeah, for sure. So like anything with a lot of sports and especially motorsports, it's not always about having the absolute best gear. You've got to be a really, really good driver as well. And we've seen how much effort these people put in. Um, just the way that the, the, the class is spread out around New Zealand as well. Obviously, we've made mention about the 1, 2, 3 NZ and the a few of the Christchurch contenders and we'll fill you in a little bit more on a few others as the night goes on but there's also a large contingent of drivers here from Stratford, Wellington is represented here and then the guys from over in Greymouth they come all the way over to Christchurch quite regularly so kind of that makes this a little bit of a little bit of a home track so with those sorts of numbers and getting to meet those sorts of people it's quite interesting as you say finding out just how much goes into this and um, when you're in the pit lane you're getting to know these people there's never any issues there's no there's no arrogance or attitude everyone kind of just helps each other out and all that sort of stuff but as soon as they go through that pit shoot Vince she's all on she's absolutely all on as sure as we saw in the North Island Champs held recently, Brad in the first heat has absolutely smashed his car and he needed a shock and Jason Kalen 12S came to the rescue and he managed to put one in there for him and Brad went out there and performed really well for the rest of the night. But I wonder how is tonight going to work? Shall we have a look at um, the format for this evening and for the championships in general and see um, the context in which these drivers will be battling for the New Zealand Championship. So let's uh, go over and have a look at a brief video about the format.
there are over 30 drivers entered in the championship. The drivers are divided up into six groups. The groups are seeded, meaning that the best drivers are dispersed evenly throughout the groups so that no group is stacked. Each group is named after a sponsor. Group 1 is Koken. Group 2 is Anderton Decorators. Group 3 is Edge Parts and Performance. Group 4 is PG Hydraulics. Group 5 is Value Cars. And Group 6 is Recreation Hotel. Each group races each of the other groups, resulting in 15 heats in total, 5 heats per group. There are 3 heats on the first night and 2 on the second night. The drivers accumulate points over those heats. A driver will be awarded 12 points for first place, 11 points for second place and so on until 12th place who gets 1 point. Drivers get no points if they are unable to start or finish a race. After each group has raced 5 heats, the 16 drivers with the most points qualify for the 30 lap feature final. The driver with the most points gets to choose between grid position 1 and 2 for the final. The rest of the drivers are gridded up in order of their ranking by points. That leaves 4 available places in the final. Check, These check, places two. will be filled by the first two across the finish line in each of the two reaper charges. A reaper charge is a last chance race for drivers who haven't managed to qualify for the final to do so. The first two across the line in each reaper charge will fill the last four positions on the starting grid for the feature final. From there, it's simple. The first to cross the finish line after 30 laps is the latest New Zealand Modified Champion. So we are here in front of Luke Brown's trailer, 3NZ, and he is a former New Zealand champion. And I tell you, he has had a wonderful season so far, and some would say that he is on form and looking at repeating another New Zealand championship. We have had the pleasure of watching him at several championships. Now, there's a few championships which determine what sort of form you're in when it comes to the New Zealand champs, and that is, of course, the North Island, the South Island champs, and then it's the championship where the New Zealand champs is going to be held. So this season, it was Canterbury champs. Now, Luke Brown won the Canterbury champs, he won the North Island champs, and he won the South Island Champs. So Luke Brown, 3NZ. There's other ones that he's had. I could go on for a long time. But this guy, he is in for the serious shot of putting that 1NZ back on his car. But at the moment, we're going to cut over and have a look at how he performed when he won the Canterbury Champs. <laughs>
Luke Brown, you come all the way down from north, big long trip, and you take out the first heat you're involved in. Pretty good, mate. Yeah, pretty stoked with that. Real stoked. Started from position six from memory and got through to the front. So, no, real happy. Car was good. Uh, can do some slight tweaks to make it better, but, yeah, really, really stoked. Hayden Corbett, one hell of a spin out there, mate. Jeebus, creepers. Yeah, no, it was pretty awesome, mate. We've done a few more uh, bits and pieces to the car. Um, and I think we really found our groove, a bit of new rubber on the back, thanks to our um, Smith's Cranes, their sponsor. And, yeah, it's made all the difference, so... Covey 17W got out the front, stayed out the front, mate. Yeah, that was. I guess that was always going to be the plan. We needed to um, make the most of that front grid. 82C, Steve Sinclair came in second in that one, but um, talking about a few dramas, what's going on? Yeah, we uh, had a flat battery. 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 Flat battery. Flat battery. So I wouldn't start and. Uh, I couldn't turn the fan on, she's getting a bit hot. Um, yeah, just flat battery. Flat battery. Yeah, so we've got the lights out now, and yeah, Sinclair, uh, Steve's top qualified, so he chose um, grid one. Pretty even start, just about clacked the wall on the way through. Yeah, just slipped back into second there, Steve taking the run, and. I guess just set about into our, our rhythm a little bit. It was pretty hectic at the back there. Yeah, it was pretty slick early on. You can see down there, three and four, it's pretty black like from the get-go. Yeah, so everyone's just trying to get the most drivers they can out of that three and four being so black. Trying a few different lines, running high, cutting low. Even Brad's running down low, so you know, you know something's on there. Not often you see Brad down low. Yeah, so this is kind of the point where I started catching Steve a bit. Um, he was backing off quite early in the corners. Um, yeah, had a dive under him here in turn one and two. Um, I thought he was going to cross back under me, but I actually thought Mike would be super close. He, by the sounds of it, he was getting close at the end there, but I knew if I left the door open at all, he'd be straight in there. And, oh, there's Mike up into second. And it was, it was about this time uh, one of my co contact lenses actually fell out. It didn't fall right out, it kind of half stuck in there, so... I was sitting there for a bit trying to blink away. Dan Ray's right there too, so it was a pretty close race. Oh yeah, there's the white, white flag there. So you look how slick it is, man, you're just gassing it up. But it actually started raining just before this, and I think you can see up here, I actually clicked the wall after the flag, or maybe it was the next lap round. Luke Brown, 3NZ, you come all the way from Auckland, and it was well bloody worth it, mate. Yeah, it makes the trip worthwhile. Um, yeah, it was a bit, bit touch and go with the rain there, um, and being out the front, you know, you're not too sure how far to push it, but. Um, yeah, it was, there's a lot of fast cars here and uh, we had a good couple of battles at the front there, so overall we're stoked they come away with another win, so yeah, over the moon. So I'm here with Pellet Supplies 3NZ, Luke Brown. Luke, we just saw how amazing you were at the Canterbury Champs. You've also won the North Island Champs and the South Island Champs. Mate, you're having a blinder of a season. What's your secret? Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a dream season, really. Um, I mean, yeah, we've got a lot of things right on the night. Um, I wouldn't say by any means we're the best or quickest car. It's just you've got to get the whole combination right on the night. You know, you've, you've got to be quick. Uh, good grids, um, combination of, of, you know, drivers on the track and a um, bit of luck, bit of bit of everything. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just um, making a bit of a plan for each meeting and then trying to hit that, um, you know, whether it's to make the podium or pass a certain amount of cars each race. Um, but yeah, just, just little milestones and then yeah, it's just come together for the for the big kind of finals each night and yeah, couldn't be happier, eh? Yeah, 
Yeah, no, you've been doing absolutely stunning. And um, I hear you told me before that you haven't raced in a few weeks. I mean, you went to Whangarei and uh, attempted to do the 30 lapper there, but you pulled off in the, after a few laps. And so if, how are you feeling about this weekend and the New Zealand champs? Are you going to put another number in your car? Yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, we had, uh, I think it was about five weeks in a row of consecutive meetings. So it was just, it was just flat out and it was like um, Waikareka, Huntley, Christchurch. It was all over the shop. And then uh, we didn't race for seven weeks. Um, started with, with the whole COVID thing. And then, uh, yeah, a couple of rain outs and bits and pieces. So, yeah, we didn't run for seven weeks. Um, we ran last weekend at, up in Whangarei for the 30 lapper. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're doing all right. And uh, just clipped another car and um, did a bit of front end damage. So that was her. But, um, yeah, it's, the weeks off really gave us a good chance to go through everything and, and do a bit of um, TLC, uh, a lot of prep work and that. So, um, yeah, really happy with how it's all gone and the, and the lead up. So, yeah, we're just happy to kind of be here. The weather's good. It should be a crack of a meeting. There's some awesome drivers here. So, yeah, really keen to just get stuck in and see how we get on. Yeah, definitely. Now, being the three NZs, you've got a bit of a target on your back. And then the fact that you've won a couple of championships here and the North Island champs, I'd say you might have a bit of a target on your back. Is that actually a thing in modified racing that um, other drivers uh, might be looking at seeing if you know you're on the outside? We'll just kind of you know, take them out. What's what's that like in this sort of uh, in this class? Yeah, I guess um, like any sport, I guess um, if you're kind of near the pointy end, you, you may have a target on your back. Um, the modified class is pretty good. Um, there's a lot of good guys in the class. Uh, most of us get along really well. Um, you know, catch up after the meeting for beers and and help each other out if they need spare parts and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, I'd say maybe there'd be a bit of a target, but you know, there's there's a lot of good guys here with good gear. Um, you know, it's not a case of, of two or three guys that may win it. I, like there's probably there's probably 16, 17 guys here that could get a number, and I don't think anyone would bat an eyelid. There's 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 a lot of good gear, a lot of good drivers. You've got ex sprint car drivers. You've got half a dozen X1 NZ. So it'll it'll come down to whoever wants it on the night. Um, you know, you you let any opportunity slip, and that's potentially you done. So. Um, yeah, there'll be a target on our back, and uh, like there will many, because there's there's a whole bunch of quick cars, and you know they want to beat me, I want to beat them. It'll just be, you know, who wants it that bad, and yeah, we'll see how we end up tomorrow night. Yeah, definitely. Now, last question before we um, before we go over to um, Aaron with uh, number one NZ Brad Lane. Um, you got a pretty good crew behind you, and not least of all your recent fiance Tash. <laughs> and I understand you're doing a, a bit of wedding planning at the moment. Is that right? Yeah, that's true, mate. Seven weeks off is a long time, so uh, yeah, thought I'd get out the spreadsheets and the notebooks and make some planning. But yeah, I'm I'm really fortunate to have um, um, Tash on board, my fiance. She's she puts in a whole lot of hours during the week, um, you know, changing tyres and cleaning the car and helping me with general maintenance and servicing. And on race night, she's a huge help as well. So um, and then Dad helping on crew nights and Marcus as well. We've got a good mate Ryan Neve who's who's real clued up. He's here tonight helping as well. So. You know, without those guys and um, the likes of, of my sponsors, um, I couldn't do it without these guys. Um, Pallet Supply is my primary sponsor. They've backed me this year, and I'm, I'm real fortunate to have them in my corner. And then, uh, yeah, all my other sponsors who help us out, Dodd Civil Consultants, Chillex Group, Garage 16, Smith Racing, PG Hydraulics, Penrose Motors and Track Sport Engines. You know, those guys are the reason why, you know, the numbers are on the car, and I couldn't do it without them, to put it simply. Yeah. Oh, but it's a lot of your skill too. Don't underrate yourself because you're definitely a special driver. Um, so, uh, Pallet Supplies, 3NZ, Luke Brown, thank you very much for speaking with me. I'm sure we'll be chatting throughout the night as well. All the best for tonight, and um, we'll cross over to Aaron with Brad Lane at 1NZ. Okay, we're here with the 1NZ, Brad Lane. It's it's finally here, mate. So, we almost got here last February. Then that damn COVID snuck in, put everything off. How's the nerves been waiting for this to happen? Oh, I've been pretty good, really. Um, don't get too nervous going into a meeting anymore, but obviously like a big meeting like today is, once you get here, it's sort of like, oh, OK, got to get the job done, you know. So, But once we all get out there and, and give it some gas, you know, it all sort of goes away and you head down looking into what, what's ahead, you know. Yep, absolutely. So you came down to Wellington last year and obviously cracked it with the title. And, um, and how does that add pressure for a driver coming into this year? Because I know you're very much a driver that's about having the having fun and getting out there and being involved in Speedway like, like you guys all are. But you must feel a little bit of pressure as you kind of get through things and um, you get on with the season because you, you work pretty hard on this thing. Yeah, um, obviously the start of this season we sort of struggled a little bit and, and that sort of frustrates you and then you sort of work around it and try and figure out what, what's going on and the rest of it and, and then you start getting there and you know and then you start performing again and, and obviously it makes it a bit, bit easier but I think more than anything we probably put 
pressure on ourselves to do well any meeting but then now you've got a number on the car it's sort of a little bit more but um, we're just going to try and do a bit more laid back approach today and, and see how that get, gets on because yeah I never really thought that there would be much pressure but it 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 doesn't get to you but it's there sort of thing you know it's hard to explain but it's just one of those things I guess that comes with with receiving that number you know so um, obviously we try and keep it all out the back door tonight and tomorrow and, and go and enjoy ourselves. Yeah, complete reset. I mean, you've got a lot of respect for the sport and what happens with the sport. So get a bit of a reset, get out there, do your best, and um, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully keep it. Now, this doesn't just all happen just with Brad Lane. You've got some pretty special people involved in your team. It's a very family orientated team. Why don't you tell it, tell the fans out there a little bit about your team and how things tick for this? Yeah, so um, between uh, ourselves at our, at our workshop at home, between my father and grandfather and um, and Trev, you know, we make most of the things for the car, um, from making radius arms to, to the chassis to we even make the wings ourselves. So, you know, so between that and obviously all the crew that come up um, during the week and stuff and help out, you know, Brett and Nick and obviously uh, my mum and, and my, my um, fiancé Jazz uh, <laughs> letting us play in the, in the shed all the time. So... Um, that, and then all the sponsors, man, like Andy and Jane from Professional Door Services, they they come to every meeting, they're down here. Um, my Auntie Claire, she does a bit of the uh, merchandise and stuff. So, you know, mum does all the videoing so we can go back home and, and relay and, and watch what we've done and what it's done on the car and how it looks from the outside perspective rather than just me sitting in the car. So, you know, like I say, it's a real family sport. There's three generations of lanes here watching and one racing tonight. But, um you know, it just makes it all go round and round and, and everybody does it a little bit and just makes it a bit easier, you know. So, like me and Elboy aren't all stressed out all week that, you know, we can get Nick or, or Brett in to change some tyres or whatever and, you know, just make it all a bit easier. But everybody does their part and, and there's a lot of us here, um, you know, and, and just the fan base is, is ridiculous, you know, as well. Especially with the people up on the bank and stuff, you know, wearing our shirts and stuff. We never thought that would get that big. But you look at it now and, you, and you're still blown away going, wow, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You guys have got a heck of a lot of followers. And it's it's that dedication to the racing and the sport and what you do out there on the track that really, really makes it. So, And um, and you've got a pretty good package here with the car. So um, tell us a little bit about your car. What sort of, what is sort of chassis and that are you running? Yeah, so it's a Raceworks chassis from Trev up in Huntley. Um, uh, the motor's built by Roger Bertram. Um, you know, the stuff in the car is not all that new, but, you know, it is of uh, newer calibre than some of the old stuff. But most of it was in the car when the old man built his his first Raceworks car, which was 2006. So most of it's sort of around that area, and it's all getting a bit tired now. We're trying to upgrade a few things and stuff, like we put new rear wheel centres in it this, this season. And, you know, it's just a good combination is all you need between the motor and, and everything else you got. And, you know, if you can get that power to the ground, then the car will work and, you know, you should make places up. Um, it's, it's a good combination is all you need, really. You know, you can have some older stuff and, and if that's what's working for you, well, then you don't really change it, do you? Well, it's not all the car. It's got to be a little bit about the driver. Now, while we're talking about that, though, this track here at Woodford Glen, it's an egg-shaped track. So you've got the wide sweeping turns into one and two. Then you've got that sharp turn three and four, big long back straights, front straights. How do you go? Like, you can set the car up for either ends of the track or find some balance. Um, obviously, you're not going to get the one end, it's not going to give us away all his secrets in terms of what he's doing, but this isn't the easiest track to prep for, is it? No, it's not. Like you say, one corner's real um, a momentum corner. You've got to drive the car in fast, keep the speed up through the middle of the corner to have good exit speed. And then the other corner, you know, sometimes, depending on how the track goes, you've got to get to the center the corner, stop the car, turn it, and, and drive off. So this is a real driver's track. You know, you've got to think about what you do and obviously what you do to the car and the pits and then how you're going to approach it when you get out on the track. But um, I think sometimes, you know, the track can change and some people won't notice it and they'll just stick to the bomb bottom or whatever and, and the top of the track's working. Um, and, and sometimes it catches people out and sometimes you might, you, you know, you might pass them and then they, then they realise, but other people sort of stick down there just hoping that it's going to do its thing. But it is very difficult. Um, it's... It can be challenging, especially when one corner might be up the top and then the other corner's down the bottom, you know, so you've got to slow the car up, get down the bottom, and then the other one, you've sort of got to sail the thing in and then try and slow it up at the other end again. You know, it can be difficult. Sweet. Well, you know, we're, we're definitely living in the moment in terms of what's happening this weekend, but last season was very, very special. So we're going to have uh, take go back and have a little bit of a look at, um, at your reaction after the 1NZ title in Wellington last year.
the dream is realised. Yeah, mate, our family's been trying to trying to secure this one for 30 odd years, you know, so for a second generation to drive it to get it is just unbelievable. As they all say, it hasn't hit yet, and it really hasn't. Um, it's all still a bit of a blur, but I'm sure we'll have a few beers tonight, it'll hit at some stage, and I'm sure we'll drink some more after that. <laughs> Your family's been involved in racing for a very long time. You guys have been having a crack at this. Um, last year it didn't go too good. You've, you've had a new car this season. You've had a build up through the modified Super Series and um, came and won the last round of that. Gave you a bit of momentum and then you've come and won the national title, mate. Yeah, mate, you know, we can't thank you guys enough. Um, it's obviously worked in our favour having this down here. Obviously get a few more laps in than, than um, other people, but yeah, we struggle with this car to start off with, but man, is it a rocket ship now, man, it proved it tonight. Man, I just can't thank everybody enough that makes this go round and round, because, man, I love doing it. <laughs> well, hard fought, well deserved, congratulations, Brad Lane, 1NZ. Yeah, cheers guys, thank you very much. Right, thanks buddy. I'm 1NZ, baby, woo! Rocket Racing 1NZ modified Brad Lane let us watch on as he had his car on the dyno at Steve Sinclair's workshop, Ari Sinclair in Christchurch. And of course we record it all for you to watch. Let's watch on as Brad, Steve and the crews from Rocket Racing at Ari Sinclair make one of the fastest modifieds in the world even faster. Yeah. I just want something that's reliable and safe, but yeah. um, it's more torque. Torque. Thing, really, yeah. If you can horsepower your hub torque, hey, yes. you yeah. don't pull the thing out of the corner more than anything, not drag somebody up down to the end of the street. Yeah. I am here with McPhee Motorsports 2NZ, Blair McPhee. Blair, welcome to Coconut Wood for Glen, mate. Right, How are you right. feeling about this weekend and this championship? Oh, really right, oh, I'm feeling pretty good, actually. Um, yeah, it's been a good week of prep, and that's what it is, really, at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah sounds good, mate. And you've had a pretty good season so far. I mean, only a few weeks ago, you won the Manawatu Championships at Palmerston North, and the Modifieds haven't been to Palmerston North for a while. How was it going out there and racing in front of those fans? Um, no, it was actually pretty cool. Um, it was nice to go there for a change and hopefully get some more meetings there. But um, yeah, I had a bit of a redemption on that place after my last fill there. So it didn't end too well, so it was nice to finish on top. And did uh, they, um, now you came second and the North Island champs almost came first. Tell us a bit about that, mate, because that was, that was some amazing racing and an amazing finish to the night. Can you tell us a bit about that and tell the fans what actually happened that night? Ah, uh, yeah, no, um, no, we had a good night, uh, ended up tied again with uh, Luke Brown, it seems to be our little ritual, we like to have runoffs all the time, and uh, he, yeah, thought I got the lead and thought I sort of had him, and he did the old dive bomb on the outside and got me, and his big pass paid off, so yeah, we ended up second. That's right, mate, but at the Wellington track, where this happened, at the Wellington track, at the previous New Zealand Championships, you also had a runoff uh, for the 2NZ here, and that was a different story, wasn't it, Blair? Yeah, yeah, he beat me fair and square, but then, um, yeah, I ended up in the referee's box for a jump start, and hey, what they said was, was to go, and that's what the outcome ended up being, which wasn't fair, you know, I don't like doing it in office, but it was, that's how it happened to be. So, yeah. 
now so you got the two NZ. But Blair, you've had a you've been in Modifieds for a while, but the McPhee name is well known in Modifieds. Can you tell us a bit about the bit of a history about McPhee Motorsport and your dad? If he'd be if he'd be, be happy to <laughs> for you to share a bit of that. Uh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I started obviously about oh Jesus, about forty four, maybe forty five years ago. The old man started racing, and he started in stock cars and. Um, then yeah, and stock cars, super saloons, and all that sort of stuff, and then he ended up in a modified, and yeah, it was just sort of jumped in, and so, yeah, we got a, we did the mini stocks when we were twelve, and then we got a stock car for a season. Decided stock cars wasn't our turn, you know, it wasn't really what we were into, and then uh, yeah, ended up with a mod- with the modified, and yeah, we just sort of stuck at that, and it's, yeah, so it's about nine years now we've been doing it, so it's pretty cool. Nice, and yeah, of course, you and your dad aren't the only ones in racing. I was at uh, Wellington track uh, last week, and I saw another nine W there in the mini stocks. You got a daughter involved now as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. My yeah, daughter has started uh, racing mini stocks last season. She got two two meetings before COVID hit, and then um, yeah, so she's it's her first full season, and yeah, she's loving it. Hey, just enjoying following her around and sort of putting my car to the side a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Excellent. All right, and um, let's get back to this weekend, the New Zealand champs. You got a two NZ on your car. How are you feeling? Are you nervous? Are you, are you confident? No dramas for the car? Uh, no. Hopefully, there should be no dramas with the car. We've uh, had a lot of dramas leading up to this, like uh, fuel pumps, a couple of uh, broken fuel pump and uh, the steering box and the diff. But yeah, so hopefully that's all should be good now. Um, no, yeah, pretty confident really that we can. Yeah, we got probably got a car that can probably do it. But hey, it's luck at the end of the day. So we'll just see what what the outcome is really. Uh, been an absolute pleasure. I'm sure we'll chat more tonight. So good luck for the New Zealand champs. We're going to cross back over to Aaron for another interview. Okay, we are here with the 69C Andrew Navin running the Edge Parts and Performance car. So, um, Bare Bones Racing. Yep, so New Zealand title, it's finally here, mate. We've waited and waited. You're the class rep, absolutely, down here for, for the mods, aren't you? That's correct, yep. yep. Absolutely. So, you guys have um, you guys just been building all season, just consistently going through, doing your, doing your job. What's, um, how are you feeling about the title? Yeah, pretty good. So, the car's probably the best we've had it. Uh, we're as good as we've been. So, yeah, we're, we're hopeful. Magic, mate. So, and um, what sort of car are you running? What, what, what sort of chassis and engine are you running in this beast? Okay, so we run a Triple uh, X chassis, uh, which is um, Edge Parts and Performance style of chassis, uh, Chevy engine, and the Camaro body. Excellent. And um, it's not just about driver. You guys have got a you guys have got a pretty amazing team. So, um, so who helps you out with your racing? Yeah, so our biggest thanks has got to go to Tubby because uh, he's actually the car owner. Um, so I get the, the pleasure of actually driving this beast, which is pretty cool. Um, then we've got my partner Mel, and so we've got to thank her for all the time that we spend on the car and not at home. Uh, and I've got my daughter Tash, um, Craig, we've got a couple missing tonight obviously with um, Todd and Liv, and then Craig's partner hiding down there. So um, yeah, it's a good crew, they work their asses off, and without them we're nothing, so it's good. Absolutely, so home track advantage, how much do you reckon that means here? A little bit, but it's not everything. Hey, look, there's a massive, massive group here of really, really talented drivers. So, yep, it's anybody's. Yeah, it is. It's an absolutely class field. We've got um, we've got some of the best here for this weekend. So, now, other than the racing, obviously, edge parts and performance, you guys are out there selling a lot of Speedway stuff and, and things like that. So, anyone out of that audience there today, you know, if someone wants to get into Speedway, you know, how do they go about that? Just a simple phone call to, to Isaac Edge, 0800 parts, and um, we'll guide them. Yep. So, and you guys look after everything, sort of mini stock, stock cars, modifieds. You're not not just a modified store; it's an everything store, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We do trackers, and uh, we'll, we'll help anybody. And it doesn't matter what they drive; it's their passion, and we'll help them with it. Yeah. So that's it, folks. So these are a set of people that you can talk to if you are looking at getting into Speedway. That's for sure. So, so back to this event. Obviously, things have been building in Christchurch for quite a while. You guys have got a real strong field of Christchurch guys. So um, stick together and stick it to them out there. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's to pay and say it does help us on a week to week basis because the, the guys we have got here are top of the line. So you're racing good guys all the time. And, and hopefully uh, that'll show this weekend and the cream of the crop will rise and it will be Canary. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's absolutely true. So um, another thing that I noticed, you race the um, the American racer type tyres. Um, a few of the other guys around the um, pit lane um, are on the Hoosiers. How, what's the difference between those two tyre types? I just think it's personal choice. We've never run anything other than really American racers because that was our main brand. Uh, we do sell the Hoosier now through Tony. Obviously Tony's the main importer out of Carbles. He come to us 
several years ago, asked us to hold them and we'll, we'll sell anything. And if this is what the guys want to run, it's a one-stop shop, so it helps them. So it does. It just becomes brand preference and nothing else. Absolutely. Well, 69C, Bare Bones Racing, Andrew Navin, we better let you get over to the driver's briefing. Um, all the best for this weekend, mate. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. All the best. Now... <laughs> now, Aaron, we know what these machines can do. They're very powerful going around those tracks and watching them racing side by side. Absolutely incredible stuff, right? But sometimes it doesn't always go to plan. No, it doesn't always go to plan, and that's the thing. So we've got a bit of a clip coming up to show you guys, and um, this isn't about highlighting all the drama. This is just showing the, the experience and what goes into protecting these drivers. Motorsport is definitely a dangerous sport, but it's equally very well organised. So the, the volunteers here, the, um, the emergency services people, when things do go wrong, um, they just get straight in there and get things sorted out. So uh, let's have a look at that. Impact. Just look at that way that car dives sideways. That would just be absolutely torturous to be inside. Jeez, that does not look good. It certainly doesn't. It certainly doesn't. The safety in these cars is pretty good, so let's hope that Tony is okay. Yeah, well, that, oh, I'd be surprised if he was, to be honest, but man, look at that thing. You've got the clerk of the course running out to him now. I think, oh, here's the, here's the ambulance. It is the ambulance, and I'm not surprised. That was one of the biggest shunts I've seen. So as you can see, Tony Zender was in a horrific crash there. You can see the angle of his car, the way it went like that, just in a split second. Effectively what that did was it twisted his neck um, very severely. So he was, in, um, he was severely concussed and he obviously he went to hospital as shown in that video clip. But as you can see, the people at the Wellington Speedway, they, the paramedics and everyone did their job exceedingly well. And um, Tony actually contacted us after we posted um, the first video with that censored. His wife actually got in touch with us and said, hey, where is the footage of Tony's crash? We want to see it. So, so we released that and um, they were happy to see it but because Tony's fine. So Tony did well, but that was North Island Championships and that was was one of the worst starts to a championships that I have ever seen and just a one lap of the first heat five cars were already out so we're going to have a look at the highlights of the uh, North Island championships I've just spoken to Blair where he um, where he did well on that one so we're going to have a look at the highlights of the North Island championships um, right now <laughs> Just look at that track full of modifieds. Okay. Excellent. Let's go racing. And Jonas got a great start there. It looks like Bunt is going into second place past Hayden Corbett. Whoa, 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 whoa. Brad Lane and Brian McPhee come into contact there with Jason Kalen also. Oh, that is just all on in the very first lap of this title. And they're in it again and Jonas is in the lead once more. That's right. And oh, look at that in the back of the field. Luke Brown and Blair Luskin come to contact. Oh, no. Oh, my God. And we have Tony Zender up on the wall. Absolutely horrible impacts. Oh, that does not look good, Vince. Oh, 
That is straight into the concrete wall. We really, really hope Tony is going to be okay. That is a massive impact. It's one of the worst starts to a championship. Five cars are out. We've got one person on the track at the moment being treated by an ambulance crew. They've got the stretcher out. Let's go racing! And Jonas taking first place once again. Hayden Corbett holding off 67. Bunter Pierce looking to go around the outside. Gaining a little bit of room, but not as much room as Bunter has managed to get on Hayden Corbett from Christchurch straight around the outside in turn one. And Hayden hold off Carl Hinton. Carl goes around the outside, around the outside, around the outside, and he's made it. Hey, Jonas England still out front. It looks that way, but Lucas going around the outside of Jamie Fox at the moment. Oh no, he's just been held off, and Jamie Fox takes the inside line past Hayden Corbett. And then we've got the two NZ, Blair McPhee with his dad on the outside. It's the final lap, and Jonas is in the lead by a mile. And there it is, Jonas at Bunter Pierce, followed by 24 S. Carl Hinton. What a, what a great start to the evening, mate. That car was absolutely hooked up in that one. Yeah, no, it's going good. Um, yeah, no, Carl liked it. We, um, I guess we hit the nail on the head with the setup. So um, yeah, we'll take it. This is Heat Two of the Garage Sixteen North Island Modified Champs. Okay, excellent. All right, let's go racing. And Brad off to an early lead. Jacko won't be happy about that. Oh no, Jacko claiming back first place around the outside. But Brad comes back at him. The one NZ cuts across into turn three. But look at this, Blair McPhee now closing in on Jacko. But look at this, Blair McPhee going on the inside of Jacko. And Tony touch and takes second place. Brad Lane out front, taking the ticket flag from Blair McPhee. And then we've got John Jackson in third place. Blair McPhee, not a bad second heat there. You started in sixth place, came in second. Tell us about it. Trying to make it count, really. On that, That's a pretty tricky track out there, so yeah, you got to make everything count tonight. You've got a lot of fans out there, so I'm sure they're all pretty happy with that performance. Oh, I'd like to, I'd like to hope so, but um, yeah, I was pretty stoked inside the car just to be able to keep up with Brad and, uh, yeah, and even Jacko, you know, they're top, top competitors. But um, yeah, just... Yeah, I was just absolutely stoked with, my, with that. So I hope all the fans are and all that sort of stuff. So that's pretty cool. Heat three of the Garage 16 North Island Modified Champs. We've got Jonas starting off from the back, but he is currently four points clear at the front. Okay. Excellent. Let's go racing. And Jamie Fox getting a bit of a head start there, and Luke's in second place. And we've got Jonas going around the outside, and oh, he touches Jacko. Oh, he's into the wall. Oh, jeez, and he's bouncing along. Look at that. So it looks like Luke is challenging Jamie Fox for the lead, and he does. He goes around the inside and takes first place. And we've got Blair McPhee sitting in third place there. Pretty sure that's going to tie up all of the points potentially. I'm not too sure at this stage. But now we can see that Luke is starting to lap a couple of the contenders and Jamie Fox getting caught up in a bit of traffic. He's past Jonas. Jonas is being lapped. He is, he will be absolutely gutted. We're on the final lap now. There's no way anyone's catching this guy. Coming out of the last turn now, takes the checkered flag. Then we've got Jamie Fox in second place and then coming in third is Blair McPhee, the 2NZ, the hometown boy. You are provisionally first place tied with 9W, 2NZ, Blair McPhee. Having flashbacks of the New Zealand champs last year, mate? <laughs> yeah, a bit of deja vu, isn't it? But uh, no, real happy with that last race. Car was pretty good. Um, and yeah, it was a nice, clean race. Um, and yeah, another runoff. So we've had a couple of these things now. So I guess, yeah, we just um, see what grid we get and just try and send it. And uh, yeah, see how we go. 2NZ, Blair McPhee, a little bit of deja vu, mate. Yeah, seems to be the, the norm here, this track, eh? Hey? And Luke just said, uh, can't help ourselves but tie ourselves some points. So, uh, yeah, got a runoff, I believe. Yeah. We've got Luke Brown on the inside lane with Blair McPhee on the outside. Let's go racing! Oh, Blair McPhee, is he going to make it on the first corner? And he does! Blair McPhee in the lead. But Luke Brown's trying to get his wheel on the inside there. He does still have the inside line. Can he maintain and push Blair McPhee out? Oh, he was on that pole line, but it looks like he's backed off a little bit. He probably knows he needed to, so he doesn't get in trouble. Can Luke claw it back? 
I don't know. Blair is a very strong driver. Only two laps to go. Oh my gosh, and Luke Brown around the outside. Did you see that? Oh, he pulled the dummy, mate. Luke Brown, the man who's known for riding the pole line to win races. Oh, look at that replay. Dives around the outside and into the centre. Blair never saw that coming. But heading into the last lap, Luke has a three or four car lead now. It will be Luke Brown. He is the Garage 16 North Island Modified Champion for 2021. You are the North Island Modified Champion. How does it feel? Oh, I'm honestly ecstatic. Eh? It's, um, it was a great meeting. Um, you yeah, had a good runoff with Blair. I was real close and kind of went for an all or nothing pass and it, it paid off. So. Okay, we are here at the track. Actually, we are here on the track. So this is where it all takes place. We're just standing here in turns one and turns two at the moment. And while we can see Greg Brown, the, the crew chief, and also the father of 3NZ, Luke Brown, he's just getting out, having a little bit of a check and um, all very technical equipment. So uh, these guys quite often, they go around with their screwdrivers and they're just checking to see the condition of the track. But I'm gonna let an expert tell you guys a little bit more about it. Greg Brown, crew chief for the three NZ mate. How's the track looking? Uh, track looks really good. Like the weather down here has been pretty good and stable. There's a lot of heat, but there's also been a lot of water and moisture being put into the track. So I think by well, the end of the night, it, it obviously will slicken off. But with the amount of moisture in it, I think it could be a good drivey two lane track for a while. So there will be two grooves appear. There'll be guys up the top and guys down the bottom. So I think that over this five heat format for the weekend, we're in for a real good show. Yeah, absolutely. So there's not a lot of, um, there's no other big tyre classes here tonight, but there is six groups of these modifieds out here racing. So as you said, might hold up for a little while, go a little bit slick later on, and I guess we all hope for a little bit of grip up top. Oh, definitely. There'll be guys that'll run the high line, then there's guys on yeah. the bottom. So all we want is, or we want everybody to enjoy themselves, do the five laps, then when they get into this 30 lapper, It'll be all go. So it's going to be a very interesting format and a great weekend for everybody, cars and spectators. Yeah, absolutely. So as a team, obviously, you guys plan everything out and things like that. When it comes out to uh, bringing the screwdriver out, sticking it in the ground, um, obviously you go back. Is it is it all a collective decision or does the driver make the final decision in terms of how the car's set up? You just give a bit of advice. How does it work in your team? Yeah. With our team being as small as what it is like, Luke's the operator of the car, so we go back and we, we analyse the track, we look at where it's hard and where it's soft, and he will decide what he wants to put on the car, what he decides to put on the car, we run with it because he's driving it. Yep, well that's the way, so you guys had a pretty um, pretty successful season so far, so we very much thank you for your time coming out and having a look at the track, and um, all the best for you guys tonight. Excellent, thanks very much, and thanks to the crowd and all everyone turning up, this is going to be an epic weekend. Thanks guys. So I am here with Scotty Lane. You are the father of the One NZ, Brad Lane. How does it feel? Oh, no, pretty good. Yeah, it's um, it's been a long season, and that's um, something that we've always sort of raced to get. And no, it's it's really good. Can you talk us through the last New Zealand Champs last year? I mean, I saw you partying pretty hard that night. I mean, <laughs> how did it feel when you saw your son um, passing the finish line to get that One NZ for the New Zealand Champs? Can you put this into words for us? Well, unfortunately, you can't sort of get too excited because you got your 10 minute um, wait until they finish the um, final results. So uh, uh, it's sort of a bit delayed, and then it's sort of like after your 10 minutes, you sort of sort of sinks in a bit, and then it's sort of then you sort of realise it's probably the next day you sort of well, actually, it was back in the shed when we had the car in the shed and it had one NZ on it. It was probably the first time it really sunk in. So that's uh, good. Oh, I can imagine. So, Scotty Lane, the Lane name has been a modified racing for quite a while because you yourself have been a bit of a, a bit of a modified driver too. You even got two NZ at one stage, I think, 14 years ago. If that's not, is that, is that oh, correct? Yeah. Brad knows all the dates and stuff, but yeah, that's probably about right. <laughs> yeah, sweet. So, can you talk us a bit through about um, how things were back in the day? Oh, I don't want to say back in the day because it sounds like <laughs> when I didn't have wings. I didn't race that long ago. I oh, know. Oh, that's right. But um, how do things go with um, your modified career? And then how do things transition to Brad coming into the scene? Oh, well, he sort of obviously showed an interest from early age and stuff, helping out dad in the garage and stuff. 
then when we got the mini stock, we're sort of just teaching him how to drive and just all that sort of setups and stuff. And then he sort of took over and know more more than what I knew. So it sort of went on from there. So, yep, just from there. Yep. Do you have any favourite memories from back in the day when you were behind the wheel? Or was 2NZ the highlight? Oh, yeah, that was probably one of the best ones. But another one was uh, racing with um, old Foxy, um, wheel to wheel at um, uh, Bay Park which was quite a while ago, but, you know, it's, I've got plenty of memories. So I imagine you have um, quite a few battles with uh, Foxy. He's been around for quite a while, so a lot of races there. But how do things work in um, in the 1NZs and the, and the crew and, and the team there? What what sort of role do you play in the team? I'm told I'm just the engine man. <laughs> oh, no, we sort of all discuss what we should do and Brad, so we just throw some ideas at Brad that he might not think of and, and stuff. So sort of just bounce a lot of ideas off each other and, and hopefully we get it right. So obviously we have interviewed, uh, interviewed Brad tonight already, but um, you all know a bit about how he's feeling. Are you able to tell us a bit about that? What sort of headspace is he in tonight? Is he confident for a repeat win or how's he going? Oh, uh, yeah, he's probably a little bit too relaxed at the moment actually. So, I oh, know he's, he's, he's pretty calm and stuff and we sort of just keep ourselves busy and just go from there so excellent well thanks for chatting to me scotty uh, i'm sure we'll be seeing you later in the night and hopefully another big party tomorrow night but um now i'll cross back over to aaron i believe he's got a bonnie sinclair okay we are over here at the 82c modified and we've got bonnie sinclair here having a bit of a chat to us so the wife is steve sinclair mother part of the crew and you do a bit of racing yourself bonnie yeah i sure do yeah Absolutely. So before we have a little bit of a talk about the 82C, tell us a little bit about your racing career. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty new to the racing career. Um, haven't been behind any kind of wheel for very long. Um, found a bit of a passion later on in life. So yeah, I'm just cruising around really. Yeah. Yeah, so what are you doing at the moment? You're racing go-karts? Yeah, well, uh, racing go-karts at Cartsport Canterbury um, with my daughter Bria Sinclair. Um, mum and daughter team, so it's pretty cool. Uh, real fun, yeah. Anyone wants to give something new a try, yeah, really guarantee it, yeah. Awesome. Now, I'm sure we'll catch up with Steve at some point, but um, but you're obviously in behind the scenes with this car. So last year, Steve sold his car on. Five minutes later, he got the new car for the season. Um, you've um, you've had a bit of up and down stuff going on, but how, how is Steve going into this weekend? It's his first New Zealand title, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh it's been pretty nerve-wracking, really, just because it's such a big event, but keep reminding him just to treat it like another club day. Um, this is our home track, so we've got the bonus of knowing where to be at the right time with the track, so fingers crossed it'll go smooth sailing. Yeah, it's down to luck some of the time, so yeah. Yeah, that's the one. It is certainly down to luck, but the um, the car's running good, and um, and if he's in a good headspace out there, and obviously, how do you think the, um, the home track advantage will um, play for your team? Um... Uh, pretty good uh, considering that we race here you know often we didn't travel uh, this season due to just having the New Zealand's here we thought we would just concentrate on this home track um, hopefully it will show tonight yeah we've worked hard so yeah yeah, no, you guys have worked hard. Um, everyone down here, it's our first trip down to uh, to Christchurch to experience Woodford Glen with the modified drivers down here and all of their families and stuff, especially you guys, because these guys let us into their world and you you will see Steve and Bonnie a little bit later on in the show, either tonight or tomorrow. Bit of a profile on you guys, but thanks very much for your time and all the best to you guys tonight. Awesome, thank you. I'm here with Havana Coffee, 17W, Jonas, England. Mate, you're here. You're not looking like you're here to race. What's the situation? Yeah, no, not this time around. We um, Unfortunately, during the weekend, we uh, found a few issues with the engine. Um, kind of made more sense to not blow it to pieces and uh, save it and worry about next year's campaign up in Huntley. So I don't want to belabor the point, but what is it like being here tonight, just having to sit back and watch? How does it feel, mate? Yeah, it's it's not the same, but at the same time, I'm a lot more relaxed. I can watch the racing and I can drink beer tonight where most of the drivers can't. <laughs> it's the one. So what are you actually doing here tonight? Because you're not here just to watch. You're actually here with um, another crew. So can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, no, we're here with uh, the 59C of Alan Haig. Um, Alan sort of helped us out over the last few years and, and uh, just this season he's, he's got back into the mod class and... Um, after winning it sort of 
fair few years ago now. And um, yeah, just thought the uh, best way of repaying him was come back and give him a hand and help him get a number again when I come. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, I'm glad you can be here. Um, and Alan Haig, I'm sure we'll be talking to him a bit later as well, because he's an excellent racer. Um, but can you take us back to last year's New Zealand champs? Because you were sitting very in a very good position for making a podium finish there. Um, and then in the finals, unfortunately, you got got between two cars there and you got a couple of flat tyres and then it was over and it was just it was hard to see mate it was real hard to see can you talk us through that just because I know you love the subject so I thought I'd just bring it up again oh yeah pretty deflating but I mean that's racing I mean I'd probably be, rather be in this position than I was last year um, but hey yeah got uh, got tangled up in, in something that I couldn't avoid and yeah flat tyres don't win races no, they don't. No, they don't. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit, a tiny bit, about the Modified Super Series because that was your brainchild. <laughs> How did you find the Modified Super Series last year? You know, it was really good. Um, uh, be good to build on it somehow and, and try and um, recreate it a little bit and, and uh, do something more with it. Um, we were sort of pretty limited, especially on the trial stage, you know. Um, you don't want to don't want to sort of overstep it and, and push for something that you can't replicate in the future. So um, be good to, yeah, now we've done it once, play around with it and see what we can do. Um, I think it was really good for for the, the sport and, and the class and it's it's really helped build the profile um, a lot more. Um, it's really emptied your guys' wallets a lot, which is probably a big help to the taxpayer. Um, but it, 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 I think it really helped... Uh, the drivers that were in it, um, I think all of them were probably pretty appreciative, um, giving them a lot of seat time on the track, you know. Yeah, no, I think it went really well. It was a lot of fun to be involved with that with you last year. Um, but, mate, you've uh, had a new addition to the family recently. So the whole family's not here. You've got your um, young daughter with you. But um, what's it like having a third child? <laughs> How's that been going for you? Uh, the third child's going fine. Um, trying to juggle it all is, is pretty... Uh, pretty fun at times but um and you just had a bit of a career change as well <laughs> so you're a mechanic at Mendoza Mechanical for quite a few years and you decided to have another child but at the same time you've shifted to night work yeah why not change it up hey eh? work on trains instead <laughs> give it a go ah why not eh you know you gotta gotta have change in life sometimes it's as good as whole holiday yeah well you keep telling yourself that mate but no, it's been awesome having a chat to you well um go back over to aaron i believe he's got someone else lined up for an interview so we'll go to him now okay we are here with the 11a crew chief i believe jamo so one of the men behind one of the most successful teams in modified history with um with jamie fox jamie fox having four titles i believe so how do you guys make so much magic over the years uh, just sticking with it more than anything, I think, is perseverance. Perseverance uh, is always the best result, so we've done well over the years, like you say, but um, it's never been easy. Uh, you just got to face every every meeting as a different meeting and just go through the routine and, and back yourself that what you're doing is the right thing. Absolutely. So you guys are based in Auckland. She's a bit of a hike all the way down here to Christchurch, so it's great to have this sort of support and have some, some legends of the sport. When I say legends of the sport, it's not just the drivers that make this happen. So tell us a little bit about your crew other than yourself and Jamie. Who who else helps make this team tick? Uh, we've been together since Foxy started, really. Uh, we, knew, we knew each other at school, so we were school friends. Um, our sponsors on the car, uh, you know, a lot of them come through from those days as well. Um, you know, we've got guys that have been with us since day one, like, uh, you know, Chris or Berg, as we call him. He's been with us uh, forever. Jeremy, the same. And now we've got the young guys coming through who are all the sons of the fathers. So, you know, they do all the hard lifting and now we just sit back and watch. So it's, it's really enjoyable now. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys managed to get down here, I think it was was it, um, for the South Island Champs, I think, have a bit of a check out of the track and get absolutely everything as ready as you can when you're not at your local track. So you're good to go? Uh, yeah, we've changed everything on the car since then. Uh, um, but look, you know, every meeting, like I say, every meeting is different. We've got a rough idea what we're in for, but... Uh, you know, we've always struggled a little bit down here. We've won one of his titles down here, but it was a different sort of meeting, you know. And, uh, you know, we've always struggled against the locals. They can get around that turn three and four a lot better than us. And we've always sort of fought the car. It's, it's not a it's not a momentum track as such that um, 
that we like running on or Foxy likes running on. But, um, you know, you've got to be in the hunt and, and that's all you need to be tonight. You know, if you can make that 30 lapper and you near the front, I think you've got a shot at it. Um, the trick's going to be making the, the 30 lapper in a good starting position, I think. Yeah, that's the one. Obviously, there's a lot of racing to go. We've got six groups, five car and five cars in each group. So we've got a big first night here, big Friday night, and then moving on to Saturday night tomorrow. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. We wish you guys all the best, and thanks very much for your time, Gemma. Not a problem, mate. Good, good to go. Cheers. Okay, we are here with a lot of love lady cars behind us. Um, John Love Lady, obviously a, a great chassis builder, and I'm here with his son Jackson. Jackson, how does it feel to have all these cars lined up today? Yeah, it's pretty cool, eh? It's pretty cool to see the, you know, variety of them and how many of them are actually here and, um, you know, a few of the chassis that are, you know, a few years older than others, but it's pretty cool to see them all out here competing and, yeah, it's a pretty cool achievement, I think. Yeah, I was lucky enough to actually go to the workshop about two uh, years ago and have a look at uh, look around and see what actually happens there. Any chance that uh, you'll be taking up the flame and making some of these yourself? Uh, yeah, we're sort of trying to work through all that now and work out what we're, you know how we're going to go about it. But I mean, yeah, we've definitely got a couple of projects in the work, and uh, you know, if you guys getting back into it, that we're going to make special arrangements to build, make sure they have some of our cars, and it'll be good. Excellent. Now, uh, it's not is your father doesn't just make chassis; he's more than just that. These guys, I've had a chat to a few of them, and and they're really passionate about what he brings to the table in terms of uh, helping them out with their speedway and their passion. Um, is, how do you feel? What does what, what does John feel about being involved with all these guys? It does how does he feel about that? I mean, he loves it, right? Like, it's been his life. I mean, I think he's been doing it for thirty-five years now. Built like one hundred and thirty odd cars in total, or something now. And you know, Speedway's always been something that he's done. And you know, he loves his he loves the competitors, and there is some of them are his best mates. And you know, it's just been his life helping people go fast and building the cars and all the rest of it um you know i think it's been pretty good you know live your hobby as your job it's a good bit of fun if you ask me yeah i can imagine <laughs> one question i have for you though you're in a super saloon what's up with that <laughs> <laughs> well the old man moved to supers oh, i don't know a while ago after you know him and greg had a very good run and the modifieds after you know winning a lot of things and stuff i think they thought it was a great idea to take it and then They'd been there ever since, and I've had a couple goes in modifieds and had to go on a sprint car, and uh, I didn't really spin my wheels that much, and super saloons are just cool, you know, we work on them, build them, and they're just sort of where I've started and where I've continued on. Excellent. Well, we've got the New Zealand modified champs on tonight, and the new winner will be crowned tomorrow night. Um, do you, when you look behind here, obviously you reckon a love lady car is going to win and be the new 1NZ, but if you had to choose one, I am going to put you on the spot. <laughs> Who is going to be the new 1NZ? Oh, crikey. Talk about jinxing, eh? Um, you know, the crowd's waiting. you got to sort of look at who's been doing the best, and I'd really like to see Danny Ray, who's been one of our you know, drivers that we've been helping along. He's bloody quick. He can drive bloody well when he does. Um, he's had a lot of help, so... I think Danny Rays should have a good link. Yeah, I think he, I think he has been performing pretty well this season. Um, a lot of the other drivers here too. Um, do you reckon with this Woodford Glen, right? It's a bit of an odd shape track compared to a lot of the other tracks around the country. Do you reckon the home to, um, hometown guys have a bit of an advantage over the out of towners? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. But I mean, a lot of these guys here are really experienced. You know, they've. I doubt there's very many people here that haven't actually raced here before. They know what it's sort of like. It can be a bit of a pain. Um, turn three and four, you know, being so tight, it just kills your momentum and it just makes it difficult. But, yeah, the hometown boys will definitely know what they're doing. Sweet. Speaking of hometown boys, we're going to cross over to Aaron with Dan Ray. So, Jackson, thank you very much for having a chat to me. All the best, and uh, let's see if a love lady car can take it out. Cheers, guys. Okay, so we are here with the 24C Dan Ray. Now... Garrett 16, we actually had the privilege of um, of meeting John and um, doing a bit of an interview with him during the um, Modified Super Series, and um, which was absolutely excellent. And when we came up to do that, well, when we came down to do that visit in Christchurch, we actually went and had a look at your car in the garage. It was a good chance for us to meet. So you've got a um, you've got a long history in terms of um, in terms of love lady cars and and um, and helping with John uh, John helping you. So um, tell us a little bit about your story. Yeah, um, 
bought my first car back, I think it was like 2009 or 10 or something, and um, that was, that car had a good pedigree. That was um, Phil Patterson's car, and that had three NZ, so I had that, and I got three NZ into that as well, so that was cool, and then, um, then I brought the, one of the other house cars, and um, which was the car I sort of, I came here and watched when I was a kid, so that was pretty cool to own that car, I've still got it as well, so, and then um, this car here has got a good pedigree as well, um, Luke Keegan got, we had great success in this car, got a couple of his titles in it, and um, yeah, so the car's not lacking, it's just the driver, I guess. Yeah, and John's not the sort of guy that just welds up a few chassis and that's it, is he? He's a real knowledgeable guy as far as the sport goes. So um, so a little bit of guidance and coaching. Did you learn a lot about car setup from John? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, his workmanship's awesome, eh? Um, yeah, you definitely can't fault that. And he's he'll just tell you if um, he's, you're not doing something right, he'll definitely tell you, so... Yeah. No nonsense at all, and no mucking around. This is uh, this is the way that it needs to be done. So, um, so obviously you'll be. We're here at the uh, Garage 16 New Zealand Modified Champs, and um, you're a local driver, obviously driving a love lady car. So, um, say so how you feeling about this weekend? Uh, yeah, just sort of treating it as any other weekend, really. I just yeah, try not to hype it up or nothing. Just come do what I. I can only do what I can do, eh? So. Just go out and try to finish races, go forward, and yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Well, good luck to uh, to Dan Ray and the championship. And uh, just from me as well, just a big shout out to John. I know we've only met once, but um, it, was a yeah, very, <laughs> it was a very pleasurable experience. I think you taught us more in that, um, in that hour since we were together, since I've learned since. So thank you very much from me, and of course from Dan. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, no, Aaron, you're definitely right. We definitely learned a lot in that hour that we spent uh, with John and his, his workshop here. But right now I have um, Ralph Godwin here. Ralph, um, your history goes back a, a long way with John, so can you tell us a, a little bit about it? Uh, well, I started working for John back in uh, early 1991, um, helping to build the race cars and stuff. In fact, I was at John's 29th birthday all those years ago. He just recently turned 60. Um, so yeah, and, and like you wouldn't find a more, more passionate person in Speedway. He's done so much for the sport throughout the years, you know, just with the support he gives all of us drivers. Um, arranging, he arranges series for both the modified super saloons. Um, just so, you know, the guy sort of lived and breathed Speedway for, for donkey's years. It's just, you know, obviously he can't be here tonight because he's uh, not, not feeling very well. So, you know, it just sort of be good to show our appreciation. You know, there's, eight of his cars out here on the field tonight. Um, let's hope that one of them could do it for him. Yeah, no, I'm sure they'll give it a good go. And we've just had all 30 modified drivers out here just lined up right now in honor of John. Um, it was Essentially, it was only supposed to be the love lady cars to come out, but the rest insisted on it. How does it feel to, see, to have seen all these 30 modified drivers from all over the country come out and just wish John all the best? It's pretty awesome, isn't it? I mean, the guy's got a lot of respect around Speedway. You know, I, we, we all have a lot of respect for him. He has that uh, nature. He can come up and talk to you during a meeting and just tell you to make a few changes. It just gives you confidence in the car, whether it's good or bad. I, I remember a meeting up in Nelson. I turned up, I was uh, late, unusually, and um, the car wasn't ready to go, but John had a quick look around the car, made a few changes while I was signing in. Well, he told me he made a few changes, told me the car's perfect, go out and drive it and the car was just on rails, we did everything we wanted it to do and when I came back in he was laughing his head off at Tony Frost because they hadn't changed anything on the car, we had all the wrong shocks in it, we had tyre pressures up about 13 or 15 pounds where it shouldn't have been and it was, uh, yeah, he just gave you that confidence to be able to drive the car. Yeah. No, it sounds like an absolute epic person to be involved with Speedway and definitely a stalwart of the modified sport and it's an absolute pleasure to have all these love lady cars um, coming out tonight as well. But um, do you have any stories from uh, when you worked for him? What sort of boss was he? <laughs> oh, look, he was a uh, really good good person to work for. You, you had to uh, avoid the, the occasional flying hammer if things weren't going right, but no, he was an awesome person to work for. It was uh, probably one of the highlights of my life, actually, working for him, and I've always kept in contact throughout the years since then. Um, you know, sometimes there's been a, been a big gap between when we touch base, but... You know, it's just, uh, he's always been someone I've looked up to and, you know, his uh, his attention to detail, 
I, you know, I picked that up from him, and I've uh, I've used that in you know every job I've had since then, and and in, in my own personal life, just that attention to detail, you know, it really taught me a lot. Yeah. So it sounds like quite a not just a, a chassis builder by any means, but a mentor. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely a, a mentor to a lot of people, I think. Yeah. So almost like part of the family. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, thanks very much, Ralph, for having a chat to us about um, John, and, and thanks very much, and we'll, all the best for tonight, and to all the love lady cars tonight. Good luck the New Zealand Modified Championships, and we'll let you get back to it and um, start racing shortly. Thanks very much. So as you've just seen, we've had all the cars out here in the middle of the track at the start of the Garage 16 New Zealand Modified Championships. Um, in order to, um, in order to listen, um, not to listen, <laughs> in order to um, look after John's legacy, essentially. Um, John couldn't be here tonight, as Ralph said, he's not feeling very well. But um, Love Lady Cars, very strong in Christchurch. And uh, we can't wait for the racing to get underway. So I'm going to throw it back up to the commentators in the commentary box. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are here in the pit chute. This is at the very first race for this 2021 Garage 16 Modified Championship. The cars are getting ready now. They're starting to head out. Got the 21 age of Gary Parker heading past 24C Dan Ray in this first heat. Then we've got Evan Nichols in the 13C. Another one of the local heroes coming out in the 22C, Jamie Fox, a four-time champion. Oh, just about every group in this class is just stacked with excellent modified drivers, all heading out there now to have their first crack on a very fresh track, very, very moist at the moment, potential to slick up later. So it's gonna be very, very interesting to see how these guys go in this first race. So what we'll do now is we'll turn you guys over to the commentators up in the box. The 21H, the immaculately presented car Beautiful of Gary car. Parker. Yeah. The 24C of Dan Ray and the 63A of Daniel Crump. The PG Hydraulics Group is the 4C of Mike Gooley. The 11A of Jamie Fox. 18C of Jacob Mitchell. The 22C of Hayden Corbett. And the 53H of Barry Hunter. Now to be fair, when you look at those groups, other than Barry Hunter and Daniel Crump, we've seen all of those drivers in the last few years we here. We have. Yeah, we have. Uh, Woodford Glen. But the, uh, it's going to be an interesting one when you look at the, the grids and uh, as they roll up this race, the front row pole position goes to Parker, to the outside of him, Lane. Then Ray with Fox. That <laughs> is a four lap sprint that is going Man. to be on yeah. for all. Then we move through to the third row with Nickel and Corbett. Gurley and Hunter behind that pairing and rounding us out, Mitchell and Crump. You, <laughs> you're talking about passing cars. To be hmm. honest, keeping up with those first two rows is going to be, it's going to be, going to be quite a mission. Yeah, and absolutely. I would expect it's a very drivey track. Um, don't want to preempt it, but I would suggest watch for something spectacular from Lane. He like he does drive it in deep here, so he, he will does. Put, put it into turn one. He's not going to give any room. Uh, and Ray, this is the sort of track that suits his driving, suits his car. This is going to be, well, we talk about passing cars, it's going to be a struggle just to catch cars, I think, off the start of this race. Absolutely. Mike Goulet, another one out there too, who's uh, had a pretty good run this season. He's been there or thereabouts in most of our modified racing here at Coke and Woodford Glen and um, hasn't always been totally successful. Sometimes um, things haven't gone his way, uh, but he's always put 101% in. And there he is starting, uh, well, mid-pack, if you like. And uh, he's got some work to do, and he will do that work. He will oh, try to get that four car further up the grid than he's starting. Do not be surprised to see him try and pass the entire first three rows in the first lap. Yeah. He will commit to it. Uh, we have seen his commitment this year. A few guys have been at the, the raw end of that. Unfortunately for Mike, he did have a big moment here uh, about a fortnight ago when the Modifieds ran. And uh, fortunately for all the other cars involved, it was one of those incidents where the perpetrator actually wore most of the damage. Yeah. So uh, Mike's off, off the back of a rebuild on the four car. But you look at that first two rows, you've got Jamie Fox there. Now, to be fair to Jamie, this is probably not his favourite track. Mm -hmm. um, he has, I would agree with that. Um, but Lane, he has done lots of racing here. And look, at he's, you just sense that he wants that momentum up. He is just ready to go. Uh, he's not shy of using that gas pedal as we look. They've put the fairy dust down at turn four. So the front row must be side by side on the dust line. You've got to convert your front row grids. You're only going to be on the front row once over the course of the uh, heat racing, so you've got to convert that to maximum points, haven't you? So batten down the uh, 
the hatches race fans as we come through in Vora Waste we are side by side Parker and Lane it is on New Zealand champs we are a go Lane gets on that box is right on the heels not going to let Brad, but Brad runs it in deep, runs it up very high on the wall. Fox has seen the inside line, Ray's following as well. They have gone. Watch Fox try and convert this. They get down the into unmarked territory, the big push on the 11 car. Dan Ray sitting down low. It's a little bit greasy for the front two cars, but they're hanging on. Lane fires that thing in sideways from the pit gate. Fox seems to be able to have a car that's just a little bit looser. Watch Ngooley come through. He's got through on the 22 car. He's now into fifth spot. The first two cars just seem to be getting a little bit of a push through the uh, driveway into the track, down the far away. Lane fires in and Dan Ray. Dan Ray's picked this, he's just backing off the throttle a little bit, gets on it hard and he's chasing Lane. Fox at the moment, he just keeps his ears pinned back, he's got this one in the bag for maximum points. We look at Lane, Lane is under threat from Ray. Back to Parker and Gooley is coming through in the four car. We move through with Hunter. 18 car of Mitchell's up the inside of Corbett very close down into one back down to the other end of the track and Fox's car just looks like it's got a, it's a wee bit tight for him now coming off four and you sense Lane has just changed the driving style just putting the car in a little early but it still washes up out of two he's pulled again on the 24 car of Ray this is what Fox has to do he started on the front now this is costing Lane he was on that front row too and he has lost a spot to the 11 car. But Foxy there just, he's in the grasp of the one NZ lane. Lane slides it down into Enviro Waste. Almost a slide job on him. He gets underneath him. He's got the drive here. He's made the move. And the one NZ takes over race, race lead. Fox is just having another look back. Reappraise. Do I commit to it? Go back. They have pulled away from the 24 car, I think. I don't think any driver thought the track was going to be quite that greasy. And we're getting into a bit of the back markers now. First car they're going to come up on is Evan Nickel. Lane has got to pick the speed of the 13 car. It is quite a difference between these two. He goes to the outside side and he'll get him under brakes and he'll put the, almost like having a block car for him between him and Foxy. We cross the line once again. It is Brad Lane. Back to Jamie Fox, Dan Ray. Parker now being threatened by Mitchell. Mitchell's come through and Mitchell's oh. just going to hold the 18 car down low. He's got through and we're going to go, no, I thought we'd gone yellow. We've got very pedestrian down the front straight all of a sudden. And Mike really has gone to the high line. Now, Mike doesn't like that high line. It's like watching a gazelle on an icy lake. Out in front, though, our race lead is just peeling through these markers. He goes to the outside of the 22 car. It's a bit mushy up high, but he's going to get Corbett. Across the start and finish line we go. Now, interestingly enough, we're, the front three cars are almost going to be up on the back of the pack that's fighting 4-4. Four yeah, so it's a huge difference in pace. Massive pace difference. Mitchell's got through on Parker, Gurley's got through on Parker. So Mitchell's the one who's done the best out of this race. He started off the back row, and he's now running fourth. We look to the front, though. White flag is out as our race leader. I've lost where he is. He's in the back markers. He's right on the back there of Hunter through and viral waste. It will be the one NZ of Brad Lane takes the check-in. Jamie Fox will come through, but right on his heels, less than a car length, was the 24 of Dan Ray. And that was, race fans, heat one of the Garage 16 at New Zealand Modified Champs. Of course, technically, all these cars have now, all these cars have qualified purely by attending. <laughs> now it's about accruing points to get onto that 30 lap, 30 lap feature grid. Yeah, and I mean, the, the great thing for all these drivers is they've all finished. There's no obvious damage to any cars. There'll be a couple of cars out there where the drivers, I think, will be scratching their head and uh, wondering why they didn't get more performance when they see how far ahead those uh, front three got. I mean, Mike Goulet would be a, a, an example of that. He just did not have the uh, the right setup for this track. Um, to, this be, little to be fair to both uh, Brad Lane and Jamie Foxx, those first couple of laps, the front tyres were pushing. Uh, they, they, were. Weren't, they weren't doing much for them. They were driving off the back. But uh, certainly as that race went on, the 1, 2 and 3 cars, so the 1NZ, the 11A and the 24 car, there was a marked speed difference. Jacob Mitchell, the man who made the most of it, he started on the back row, he's come home in fourth, and uh, he managed to get through on the likes of Parker and Ongoolie, which was a bit of a surprise to be honest, you would have yeah. thought that, that would have been a bit more of a battle. Yeah, 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 absolutely you would have, but um, there you go, great first heat, as I say, all, all cars finished, no obvious damage, no issues, and uh, that's got to be good for all of them. Uh, 
So big thank you to uh, Garage 16 Media for sponsoring the uh, New Zealand title tonight and tomorrow night. And of course to the Pits TV for live streaming uh, out of uh, Coconut for Glen. And you can see some great images if you're watching the live stream at home around New Zealand or around the world. Welcome to uh, Kaipoi, welcome to Coconut for Glen. And uh, some pretty cool images there from uh, the Pits TV. Now just as an aside, the driver of the Miles Forzy modified out there, Jeremy Webb. Oh, OK. So a uh, man who's done a fair bit of midget racing this year. Of course, last time actually it was here, it was Warwick Leach, they got to pedal it around. Yes, that's right, it was uh, too. So it's a... Uh, but uh, if, you, if you're going to bring the old girl out, the uh, beautifully restored car of Miles, that Miles has, uh, you might as well put uh, some name drivers into it. Absolutely. As so that was our first heat. Um, that was Koken Group versus PG Hydraulics Group. We will update you uh, from time to time on points as we go through the night, but the points are kind of um, irrelevant, ir irrelevant until we get to uh, midway through tomorrow night when everyone's raced all their um, heats and has had all their front, middle and rear starts. Uh, because until then, um, th there's certain drivers who just get a natural advantage out of the format at any given time, and it, the whole thing needs to work its way through, um, come out in the wash as it were. The first heat of the Garage 16 New Zealand Modified Championships, you started off the front, you capitalised, you finished first, how does it feel to be back in the seat in the New Zealand Champs? Yeah, no, it was good, obviously we struggled there at the start a little bit, um, with the track still being a little bit wet. Um, Obviously we could see that, but I obviously ran the car down a little bit low and, and sledged the front and, and old Foxy got past and I didn't think I'd reel him back in and get him, but you know, I think we, we got to the grips to that particular track uh, maybe a little bit faster than what the other competitors did, so I uh, managed to see where he was, he was uh, his weakness was and, and we were able to capitalise on that. So um, car's feeling good and obviously we're enjoying ourselves, first race out with a win, so we sort of had to do it from there though, you know, on the front rows. So, um, yeah, all in all, pretty happy so far. Excellent. So what actually caught you out in that first corner there? Because I noticed you said you made a couple of changes just before you went out, and then halfway through, you kind of slid out wide there where Jamie Fox took you. What, 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 how does, does that catch off guard there, the track? What, what was, what was happening there? Yeah, so we put a shock on on the right rear, which we don't usually run. It's sort of made for a heavy track like, like that is. So, um, you know, it's not very often we get to run on a, on a grouse track like that and, and you knew it was going to be heavy and you can see it by all the dirt on the cars, you know, so I actually ran out of tear-offs in that race, I was lucky I got to the front I guess, otherwise it would have been way harder. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, so we made that, that shock change and then um, it just frees the car up a little bit so that you can actually turn the car on a heavy track like that, but obviously I just made the mistake in, in the first uh, lap, in the first corner, just running through the wet stuff, so, but from what everybody else said that most people did it as well so <laughs> yeah that's right it looked like a few of the other drivers got caught out a little bit there too but when Jamie Fox passed you you said you you didn't think you'd catch him again how'd you go about starting your attack on him were you just watching what lines he was taking and then going where he wasn't what what happened there yeah well obviously the cars in front so he, he's the one you're chasing down and, and he can't see what we're doing behind him so um, you know you can obviously see where where his car was struggling a bit and and where you think that yours would too so you change your line and try and you know, obviously you're going to have to get to him and then another thing passing him. So I just changed the line up a little bit and see if it worked. And, and we did it in one lap and reeled right up to him. So then I, then, then I figured that, you know, where I was running was sort of a, a line to pass him too. So we did that, snuck up the inside and just drove off turn four. So happy. Sweet as, mate. Well, congratulations on the first one of the evening. And I'm sure we'll be talking about the championship. So thanks very much and all the best. <laughs> Cheers, mate. All right, we'll cross over again. Thank you from, uh, was that Aaron or Vince? I don't know, one of them, in the pits. Vince. That was Vince, that was Vince in the pits with Brad Lane. Uh, so next modified heat is uh, out on the track. This is uh, heat two, uh, which is the value cars group versus the Anderton decorators group. And uh, do you want to run through the, uh, yep, the groups there? Front row is the 11C car, good number, of Cassandra Massey. Then we have Bailey Patterson in the 5C, Steve Thompson the 54 GM in third with Blair McPhee the 2NZ in the fourth spot. Next row will be the 69C of Andrew Navin, the 59C of Alan Haig, watch this man, he's a mm. dark horse. The 9C of Gary Lennon with Newton Gorge the 21S beside him. Then the back row of the grid will be a very interesting pairing of the 82C of Steve Sinclair and Bunter Pierce in the 67S. Now, Steve... Steve Sinclair in the 82 car, without being you know, jinx him, because that's what commentators do, hmm. um, would have to be the form modified of the season. He has lunched an engine in the middle of the season, so yep. we'll give him, he had some wee bit of time out, but he jumped out of the car that Nathan Astle's racing tonight, and we'll see that later on. That was last season's car. He's, brought, he's got into this uh, ex-Morris Headley machine, which found its way to Greymouth and back again, 
But once it got here, Steve's just been a completely different driver. And he's developed that car over the last uh, season, hasn't he? He's, it really has brought that car along. And I think um, there's definitely some guys to watch uh, tonight uh, fit in this particular race, in my opinion. 54, Stephen Thompson, former New Zealand title holder. Very, very smooth around here at Coke and Tools, Wood for Glen. Isn't it, doesn't always have the best of luck. Sometimes, um, oh, most greenhouse drivers hate this track. Yeah, there's making no qualms about it because it's it's very it's very different. Um, but the, when he goes well, he goes super well here. And uh, I, I do think keep it on 54. Stephen Thompson wouldn't be surprised if he can get uh, off the second row and into uh, the front row here and uh, and win this particular heat. And I keep an eye on him for the rest of the. Um, competition as well. Newton Gorge a lot of potential in that car and driver and uh, we didn't see the best of it when it was last down here. Well we saw most of it because the body got ripped off well, <laughs> every panel bar of the road. We did and Bunter Pierce 67 um, always seems to go well here at Woodford Glen um, definitely also in my opinion a driver to watch. Interesting to look at the front row you've got Cassandra Massey and Bailey Patterson now to be fair to Bailey he got a modified three meetings before the New Zealand titles original scheduled date we haven't seen a lot of him nope and Cassandra getting faster and faster as the meeting goes but the two cars sitting behind them the 54 of Thompson and the 2NZ of McPhee they're not going to wait around to find no. a gap they're going to make some room here so we are on the three minute hooter at the moment we're just waiting because the 69C cars pulled up at the uh, the gate and uh, Andrew Naven, the Edge Parts and Performance Machine. You don't miss it, it looks like a road cone with big wheels and a wing. <laughs> Indeed. It's, uh, but as you look through this pack, it is going to be... Haig hadn't actually done... Haig, Haig's another one, isn't he? Yeah, and, and you said that he could be the dark horse in this competition. Former New Zealand title holder, came back to the grade this season, wasn't originally going to make the New Zealand title when it was going to no, be held back in the end of February. Of qualifying. Yeah. <laughs> As we look to the grid, look to the cars that are out there. Where, yeah, Haig, of course, he has the car that was Dean Owen's machine for a short while, and that's got some. We've seen him uh, just moments of uh, brilliance. So they're just circulating while the 69 car gets. Well, who knows what it gets at? So because there's there's there's. there's there's no one actually um, doing anything as far as I can see to the car. They're just... Um just looking at the, what they're doing there, it's almost like he's got... He's taken his helmet off. Oh, it's a, it's a helmet change, is it? Well, I guess this is where it gets really ambiguous because... Um, you know, to be fair to some of these drivers, they do run fans and bits and pieces in the helmets, but... As... Well, he looks as though he's going to pull to the infield rather than um, onto the track. So not his, quite da sure. his daughter took the helmet away with, from with the over the pit gate. So, and he is the 69C. Looks like yeah, well he's got no helmet on, so he's definitely not racing. Now that could have been a ventilation issue. That could be all sorts of different funny things. Could be seat belts. It could be Hans Devo or neck restraint issues. But he's going to because he's sitting on in the infield, he'll get out of the car. Got no Alrighty. Safely. So we're in the starters' hands now. Well, not so, yet, but well, not close, quite, not quite close. yet. No, not, not quite yet. Very low sun angle at this time of the night at Coke and Wood for Glen. So uh, coming out of the back straight and into turn three, uh, the cars do get that sun strike. Uh, it can be a little bit of an issue. It's going particularly at that end of that grandstand as you turn it in. It's going to, uh, to be fair, it's going to depend on where the wings set. Yeah, uh, and, and if um, you've got scratches on your visor, that is one of the oh. worst things in when you get sunstrike at this place. You turn it in, and of course, this is a, a very different corner, it's got, as you can see at home. And you, All right, so Kinder's got the fairy dust on. sorted out there, and Cassandra Massey and Bailey Patterson off the front of this grid. But keep an eye on the second row, Blair McPhee and Stephen Thompson. They're going to make their move very quickly. We are green, we are racing, and Bailey Patterson leads away. McPhee, oh! oh. Got a wheel off. Stephen Thompson lost a wheel there. Yeah, we're going to go yellow, so that might explain why Stephen Thompson didn't take off, but he's freaking fortunate he didn't <laughs> launch. Um, he is in the wall there. He's lost the right rear, but I guess uh, 
I didn't see any particular contact there that would suggest that was a result of contact. I just wonder if it was. Um, I just think it's just come not off. attached. It's well, watch He's made contact with Haig, and then wow, it dug in. It dug in bad. Actually, hitting the wall seems like the lesser of all the evils out of there. Yes, I think it could have ended a, a lot worse for Stephen Thompson. Well, I wouldn't be surprised to find this still a fair bit of the hub still attached to that rim when they get to it. He's made contact with Haig. Haig's gone for a heck of a ride out of all that. Bounced mm. around. So, it, Sorry, Ellen, you can blame us for talking about you for that one. Um, but as you watched it, it was just so, so close for him to go over. You see the tyre bounce. The car bounces at the left-hand side. It's a good metre off the ground. And to be fair, driving it into the wall was probably the, the lesser of all the evils. Yeah, could easily have ended up on its lid. As we watch the replay again at our end, moves up. A little bit of contact with Haig, but not enough that you would lose a wheel. No, that's what I thought. So, uh, But Gary Lennon ploughed into the back of Haig too out of all of that. I think Haig knew what was going on, and he was just in a horrible spot. As we look... So Lennon's actually, car... Actually, no, the centre, the actual, the centre's hub was still, most of it's still attached mm. to the axle. So it's actually shattered the centre. Gary Lennon's car being uh, picked up by the tow truck, so Lennon's out... Haig's car sitting across turn one there. Looks as though he's trying to move it, get going again. And obviously um, Stephen Thompson's car will need to be picked up and uh, removed as well. Well, the reality is if you are sitting behind, uh, if you are 59, 9, well, actually not 9, if you look at the, uh, mm. the 21S, the 82 and the 67, they've just picked up three spots for doing nothing. Yeah, absolutely, without um, the race even properly... So Starting. that's worked an absolute treat for them. Unfortunately for Gary, and there's a lot of work's gone into that 9C car over the last month or two. Um, he's uh, done some front-end damage, and you can see it, on, we watched on the replay, the, the, the sheer force of the contact with the 59 car. And uh, Thompson, he's probably fortunate it wasn't an axle that snapped the way that went, or it didn't dig in, because if it had dug mm. in, he was going to be hanging off the top of that fence. Mm. And a little bit of contact mid-pack there on the start. They head down the front straight. And you can see Thompson moving up. Haig coming through on the outside. Haig realises that Thompson's moving up. As soon as they touched, it wasn't even... It was just a brush. Mm. The centre collapses on the wheel. So I don't think it's impact damage. I think it's... Well, I ain't the scrutineer, but I'm going to pick it as fatigue. Mm. And uh, just that gentle touch has done it. It's the joys of being at the back end of the season doing a title. The cars have done all the hard work. And uh, Tanya Thompson, very fortunate, he's not having to put a new wing on that car when he gets it back in the pits. As the pack heads through. Yeah, you can see it's broken all the splines off the hub. In fact, very little damage other than a whole bunch of mud shoved up the axle tube. Yeah, very little damage, I'd say, just looking at that. It's just a component failure, isn't it? Yes, I So Alan Haig's still um, sitting across the track there. Can't seem to get that car started. I think he's going to get picked up and pulled to the infield. They are. They're going for the, uh, the super tractors going in for the rescue. So that is... Uh, so that's going to be three cars on the infield as a result of that incident. Well, three, four, really, four because um, Andrew Navin never got started. So if you're the um, 21S, the 82C and 67S, you've passed four cars. Mm. Uh, and you haven't had to do much too much. Cassandra has slipped back. She's currently sitting on the track there in f uh, fifth. Yep, it's only six cars. It shouldn't be that hard to count. <laughs> You'd like to think anyway, but uh, this heat has thrown the cat among the pigeons for a few of these contenders. And to be fair, all of the cars that were being towed out of that incident were mm. contenders, or are contenders. Yeah, they are. We talked up, we talked up Alan Haig. We talked up Stephen Thompson. Um, Gary Lennon definitely uh, has shown some super speed at times this season and could have been there at the uh, end. And even Andrew Navin's been a pretty consistent... Um, if I'm to be brutal about this it, this season. This, what's happened here is the exact reason why some of these drivers wanted this format. Mm. Because for a lot of competitors, that was their night over. That was the New Zealand title. You've, come, you've hiked it all the way down from wherever you live in whatever part of the country, and you've done, well, 120 metres, and your, rate, your championship is over. But it's not. It's still very much alive for these guys. They'll get back, they'll fix some cars, and they will be absolutely amping to get more points in the next few races. Absolutely. Four good heats uh, over the rest of the qualifying, and uh, they will easily be mid to high pack for um, the final. So they 
giving themselves an opportunity. So the front row is intact, Cassandra Massey in the 11, Bailey Patterson in the 5. The uh, second row, the 2NZ car, Blair McPhee, on his own now. A gap in the third row, uh, where those cars were. And then we've got Newton Gorge, Stephen Sinclair and Bunter Pierce in the 67 uh, at the back of the field. Maybe not for too long. In essence, you have an entire row missing from the middle of that, and that's going to be the hardest thing. But So we're green and racing again, and again, Bailey Patterson gets the uh, jump on Cassandra Massey, and Blair McPhee follows him in with the 2NZ, two, and, two and I think it's only a matter of time, yep, there it goes, before Blair McPhee gets his nose in front. Stephen Sinclair's holding on to third at the moment. Newton Gorge is coming through strong behind him, and uh, Bunter Pierce just um, lifting the front wheels a little bit there out of turn four and Cassandra Massey now at the back of the field. The 2NZ of uh, McPhee holding a reasonable lead there. Bailey Patterson doing a pretty good job holding on to second place at the moment, but coming into the clutches of the 82 machine of Steve Sinclair. And you get the feeling Sinclair, you can see the push on um, Patterson's car and Sinclair takes advantage there and uh, whips in front to take over second place. Newton Gorge will be noticing that as well and looking to make the pass next time round I'm sure. And Bunter Pierce for the time being just sitting back and watching uh, everything unfold in front of him. Not sure if he's got the right setup for this track. Just looking at the way that car coming out of turn two there does not seem to hook up and he's uh, very tight through three and four. But Blair McPhee, he's got a good setup. His car's fair humming along there. Steve Sinclair starting to eat into his lead a little bit, I think. And um, I doubt we'll see a pass before the end of the race. But Stephen Sinclair is going to catch McPhee and make life a little bit difficult for him. Bailey Patterson coming into the clutches, clutches of Newton Gorge now. And Bunter Pierce, the track's starting to come a little bit more to where he wants it to be, I think. And he's picking up a bit of pace. Out of the back of the field, Cassandra Massey in the 11 car. It's another lap down, and Blair McPhee has got three or four or five car lengths over. The 82 of Sinclair, a long way back to the third place of Patterson. Uh, the 21 of Gorge, under braking through uh, three and four, takes the place. Nice little slide job pass there, and uh, Bunter Pierce will have seen that too and be thinking, right, I'm going to try and get past this five car next time round. All the while, Steve Sinclair is closing on Blair McPhee. Will he be able to do enough to make a pass before the end of the race? I'm just not sure. He just doesn't have the drive out of two. He seems to be able to handle three and four better and close up on McPhee coming out of four. But he doesn't have the drive out of one and two that he'd need to put a pass on McPhee, I don't think. Newton Gorge settling into a solid third place now and uh, Bunter Pierce following him too has also got past the five of Patterson. So not exactly a lot going on on the track at the moment with just six cars there. Um, McPhee holding off Steve Sinclair for the time being. White flag's going to come out next time round. Here we go, Brian waves the white. So Blair McPhee, just one lap to go to bring it home. Steve Sinclair have a solid second place there. Newton Gorge quite a long way back in third and uh, Bunter Pierce just not really able to get on the back of Gorge. So check it comes out now, there's your race win, the 2NZ of uh, Blair McPhee from the 82 of Stephen Sinclair. A bit of a wait and there's the 21 of Newton Gorge taking third. Well if you're the uh the 82, the 21 and the 67, you've virtually had that race one that gifted to you those extra points and it's worked yeah. really in their favour. Sinclair, very, very keen on the restart, and, <laughs> but he capitalised. Out in front, McPhee could do no more. He, uh, everything sort of opened up for him and just carried on through with the 2NZ. Of course, it is heat one for the, this group of, dri uh, group of drivers as uh, they were, a few of these drivers are going to be doing, going back to the pits and doing a little bit of soul searching, but McPhee beautiful win there, he did what he had to if it had been a few more laps it would have been interesting to see whether Sinclair could have done anything. Absolutely, and McPhee started in the second row, finished first but Sinclair started off the back row and finished second, so that's good progress for him Alrighty, so um, so next up on the uh, programme it's uh, Mini Stocks, brought to us by MDS uh, until then we're going to pay some bills, be back very shortly
purchase a set of Nitto Terra Grapplers and receive a set of steel wheels valued up to $800 absolutely free. That's right, buy Nitto Terra Grapplers and get free steel wheels, but only at Mag and Turbo. Hi, I'm Brittany Carpenter, driver of 85 GM, based out of Greymouth. I use wholesale tyres, coloured chrome rims on my car. If you're looking for something unique and different on your car, contact Wholesale Tyres to get these coloured rims. Or get a hold of them on Facebook at Wholesale Tyres, or go onto their website, which is www.wholesaletires.net.nz. See you trackside. Need coloured chrome rims? Wholesale Tyres. Good rims, better prices, great people. Okay, we have got the 2NZ Blair McPhee here. That's a um, that's a pretty positive start to the evening, mate. Yeah, no, I definitely can't complain with that start. Um, yeah, just wanted to really uh, yeah, try and finish as far up as you can, really, and just collect the points and make it you know, all benefit at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, obviously, um, flying the flag for Wellington down here, obviously, with your dad not able to be here and Damon and Jonas having all the complications that they had. But um, you guys are pretty good about going on with your race meeting and just getting the job done. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. Hey, you just got to keep trucking away. And, yeah, like, hey, if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't happen, then it's all bad, really, isn't it? But, hey, um, yeah, we'll just fly the flag for Wellington this weekend. And, yeah, we'll see what the outcome is. Sweet. Now, I've tried to talk to you about the track conditions in the past and made some assumptions, and generally I'm wrong. So tell me a little bit about the track without my suggestions first. Um, oh, the track's just actually, it's a little bit heavy coming out of three and four, but um, turn one and two starting to just come right, I think. Um, yeah, I think probably by the last round it'll start to slick it up quite well. But yeah, it's quite, yeah, it's quite drivey out there at the moment, so yeah. You're probably thinking right this time. <laughs> Sweet, that's not too bad. Excellent. I'm starting to uh, starting to learn how to do my job better. So, um, so no, that's great. Thanks for taking the time to um, to talk to us, and uh, all the best for the rest of your heats this evening. Thank you. No worries, guys. Thank you. So this group is not much be... for us to say, really, is it? <laughs> it wasn't a lot. The edge <laughs> arts and performance and the uh, recreation hotel group. As we look to the grids, it is on the front row. Brandon Parkinson, watch this man. He is quick. Three and Z, Luke Brown. He's been super He's quick. very quick though. as well. Front row scary. Nathan Astle on the 10C to the outside of him. It's going to be the 32C, sorry, 32GM. Sorry, race there so often. Is Ian White. The next row will be Jason Kalen, the 12S. We saw him earlier. Uh, Tama Holland. Back off his massive crash here in the 48GM. 49C, Kevin Ban. And Jacko, John Jackson in the 71S. The last row of the grid will be the 88T of Jason Scott. And the rocket man, Ralph Godwin, in the 99C will round out the top uh, 10 spots. Jacko's at the pit gate. He's called for the three minutes. And uh, mm. that bright green paint job. I've been on the Gorge cars for a few years, whether it was in the hands of Murray, or the paint job in the hands of either Murray Gorge or Tama Ataperi and, of course, Jacko. As we've put the uh, tractor in behind, we'll wait to see what's up. So this is the Edge Parts versus the Recreation Hotel group. There's the names of the two groups. Um, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's no real surprise that Parky's in the Recreation Hotel group, given that is his business on the coast. Absolutely. And um, like you said, he, he's an interesting character. I mean, um, been round racing a long time. His father, of course, was... Um, well. We were talking about this with, with Barry Brown earlier about how many um, of these drivers in this championship tonight are actually the um, the sons of fathers who were modified racers and very successful ones too. Well, well either that or the drivers are 100 years old and are still racing. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's a few of them out there's there There's a too. few of them too. Uh, um, <laughs> but, you know, Brandon Parkinson, um, of course, his, his father um, raced around Woodford Glen for many, many yeah, years. Yeah, Parkinson. Um, and, and Brandon has as well. Um, and like you said, he's a very relaxed individual. I mean, he's, he's uh, the, the modified, he doesn't, I wouldn't say that he doesn't take his racing seriously, um, but he doesn't seem to get too... Um, 
hyped up about it. Oh, if you look at the the setup he has, the rig, everything that pulls in, he takes it seriously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he puts the best bits into the car. He's also, you know, he's also a pretty clever man. He's, a, you know, mm, he's he a qualified de- a mechanic. So it's not like he's just going and blind. But he understands the car. He understands the mechanics. He understands that what he's been doing. He's been racing long enough now in a whole variety of cars and hasn't always had the best gear. Yeah. Uh, and so he's moved into this this chassis a few years ago he took time out for business reasons to to expand the uh, the parkinson empire on the west coast and uh but when he got back into this car this year it was almost like he hadn't been away the other car to look at there is joining him on the front row the three nz yeah. of luke brown we hadn't seen a lot of luke brown prior to his one nz title down here at uh, yep. oakland woodford Glen. he's made a couple of appearances here and you go oh <laughs> this boy's quick oh. it is the uh, 3 NZ and the 5 GM on the front row of the grid. So we have the white line, the fairy dust has gone down out of Enviro Waste. We are gridded, we are pedestrian, we are pedestrian. Look at how slow we are. Luke Brown's going to pull the pack right down and he's going to use the torque of the big V8 off the line. Here we go, race fans. We are away and racing. Parky started with him, but Luke Brown gets the slingshot into the corner. Parky drops into second a little bit. Astle in the Bassett car looking to move up. He and Ian White are getting so close. White's having the run and Jacko down the outside. Atama Holland slipping back there. Jacko right up on the back of Ian White. And he's trying oh, a little bit of contact between him and Astle. Just a little bit of a wheel rub in it. Luke Brown's out in front. Bouncy, bouncy from the 5GM car. And oh, Ian White gets given the, uh, the uh, Taranaki side slap on the way down there. Do not muscle him. Jacko comes through. As Ian White in the, the uh, LRC forward trying to hang on to the back of the 72S. Kevin Bands making moves here on the back of the 48 of Holland at the back end of the pack. Out in front though, it is Brown. But Brown has got to keep the pace up because Parky is right on his tail. You blink, you sneeze, you make one mistake and Parky's going to gobble up the 3NZ car. As we look further back, Jacko in the, the 71S. A little bit of a, just to reset the car mid-corner. Go back to White, Estel, Kalen, uh, Holland, Kevin Van with the Rocket Man and Scott rounding us out. And it looks like Luke Brown has found his groove. He's opened up the gap and he's pulling away from the 5G car. Meanwhile, the uh, 71S looks like he's just picking up a few car lengths. Luke Brown found his groove. He might have had that one set just a little bit. Parky settled down. He's not pushing it too hard. Of course, this is about consolidating and getting points. And if you look at where we are at the moment, these two cars, the two and the three NZ and 5G, and they start on the front row. They can literally do no more than what they're doing. But the man who started near the back, the 71S of Jacko, he's peeled through the pack and he's over his gap in the 32. Battle between the 99 and 88 at the back. Kalen's having a crack up the inside of Astle now. And Kalen, he's on the brakes. Astle turns it in, had to get on the brakes a lot harder. And Kalen carries the momentum off the corner. But don't, uh, don't ride off Astle, this car's got plenty of pickup on it. Atama Holland driving the wheels off the 48 car. Across the start finish line, it is the 3 and of Luke Brown. He has opened up the gap on Parkinson. And once again, Tony, we're seeing the front three cars breaking free of the pack and yeah. just disappearing. And white flag is now out for Brown. Parky sees it. You'll know from his, uh, just his own racecraft, he won't hear the 71 car on his heels. He knows he's got a bit of space. As our race leader hits the environment race, he'll straighten it up and he will take heat three of the New Zealand Modified Champs, followed by Brandon Parkinson and John Jackson. We will watch the rest of the pack come through and see if anybody's going to do no kamikazes or anything silly in the last lap. A couple of positional changes, but nothing that's going to set the world on fire through that one at the back end. But the front two cars, once they left and uh, gap the pack, the man who made all the moves, it is the big green 71S. Yeah, like the first heat, everyone got through without uh, damage, without uh, problems. 
It's just Luke Brown. It's like he's never not been away. I mean, that's that's exactly how he was racing when he was down here for the um, South Island Championship. When he's been here at uh, Woodford Glen at other times this season, it's just like getting the car and start um, turning laps, just like he always has. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like he's a local, just knows yeah, the setup. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting, if we look at the overall points as it sits at the moment, now this really doesn't mean a lot. We've had all groups have now raced, so it's even. Lane, McPhee, Brown, all sitting on top points. Fox, Parkinson, Sinclair. Um, at the moment, we haven't. We've all done one race. Yeah. It's going to get a bit jumbled and mi mi mixed up as the evening goes. But really interesting. Once the pack breaks free, they're gone. Yeah. Brandon Parkinson pulling a 15.62 lap in that very, very quick at this point. As the, they're saying, as a drivey track at the moment, it will slick out. And doing replays for us on the uh, live stream here. And Jacko, he was a man on the mission. I guess he looked at the oil pressure gauge and went, oh, well, we better get this over and done with before we run out of oil. And he came through. A little bit of contact there. And it really was a racing instant mm -hmm. with Astor. It looked a lot worse from our angle, but when you see it there, you can just see one was coming down, one was going up. Just a little scuff. Kalen, he was doing what he could in the 12k and gave it the big wheel stand, but... Astor midway down the track, you could see that the car had settled back down on its shocks and uh, just the torsions were holding it up and it was just the front wheels weren't doing anything for him. A little bit of Kevin Band there and you see the 88 car coming through. Uh, he was on the brakes to try and avoid running into the side mm. of Band. Bearing in mind there's good relationships amongst most of these drivers because you know, there's some engine builders and bits and pieces who are all involved. Really interesting contact between Ian White and Jacko. Yeah, you, 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 you called it the Taranaki slap, and uh, it, it kind of was, wasn't it? Just a real sideways stuff. Oh, I'm convinced that all, um, that all Murray Gorge's cars come out with t twin skin hoosiers on them. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it was just that little bit of a nudge. That's right, we have 3 NZ Luke Brown, the winner of the third heat of the New Zealand Championships. Mate, straight back into the driver's seat. You seem to love this track. What's happening? Yeah, I really enjoy this track. Um, it's a real technical track. Like, you can't... It's not the same at both ends. The tight corner, and then you got the big sweeper. I made a bit of variety, I guess, and you kind of got to set it up for kind of one or the other. Um, but I really enjoy it. Track was fast, and um, yeah, managed to get the jump on Parky, and then yeah, managed to have a good run. And so really, happy. yeah, you mentioned that um, you were the outside line looks quite good, and you attempted to try it out, but you thought you didn't want to open the door for Brandon Parkinson because you knew that he was right there. So, so you found the inside line quite to your pleasing. Yeah, um, it, it, it actually looked real racy all around the track. Um, it looked nice, quite high. Um, I was yeah, I was just a bit worried if I left the door open, someone would come sailing in. So um, the car was still pretty quick, uh, mid to low. So yeah, I was happy just to, to roll on there and yeah, seemed to work well. Well, it was definitely a great start to your um, campaign for the New Zealand title again. Um, that you're off the front there and you maintain the first position, which is great. That means for the next uh, few heats, you won't be starting first again. You'll be starting a bit further back. So what sort of changes there in the strategy and that kind of racing? Because you'll be, be wanting to attack or hold a position. How does all that sort of thing work? Yeah, I guess um, yeah, starting a bit further down the back for the next one um, or the next couple, I would say. So I uh, really kind of got to look who's in front of me and then yeah, just, just see what the track's doing. Um, there's not too many big wheel classes here tonight, so it may not slicken up as much as what we think tonight, but I would say we'd probably have to tighten it up a little and then, yeah, just, just run. Um, you just got to pass as many cars as possible while still staying uh, as clean as you can. And, yeah, you know, if you DNF one of the five heats, you know, that, that potentially puts you on the back foot big time. So if you can, if you can finish your top, your, your five heats in the top, say, five, um, I think you, you're doing pretty well come tomorrow. So. Yeah. And I saw, uh, I don't know if you know that, uh, John Jackson came up from sixth and finished in third place. Do you think he might be a um, bit of competition tonight? Yeah, and Jacko can be real good. Um, you know, he hasn't been uh, X1 in Z for no reason. Um, you know, some of the results he's had this year, he's won a, a meeting down in Wellington and he won the Dirt Cup in Auckland. So um, he's a gas man and, yeah, he'll be definitely one to watch. Yeah, excellent. And I see a little bit of work's going on you know, in your car here. They're putting it all together. Any changes for the next heat for you or just the same? Um, yeah, I'll just suss the track out. Um, there's another race between us, so I'll just, um, I might tighten it up and then, yeah, we'll see how we go. Excellent. I'm sure we'll talk to you later on the night, but let's go over to Aaron in the shoot right now. Okay, we're here in the pit shoot. The cars are coming out. It is round four. There was a whole heap of carnage in one of the earlier rounds, so these guys have been given a little bit longer to get their cars fixed. But it looks like some of the ones that were damaged in that heat, they are definitely getting back out there. The 1NZ Brad Lane is involved in this race. This is this is a good class of, this is definitely a good round. And uh, and I think, hopefully, we, we see that the track is not slickening up at all. So, um, so yeah, still lots of grip and lots of fun to be had for these drivers out there. Up to the uh, commentators for the race.
The grids are as follows. Front row on pole, it's going to be 24C of Dan Ray. Newton Gorge to his outside in the 21S. The 9C of Gary Lennon sitting in behind Dan. Those two guys will race a very similar line. Parker in the 24H. This is his second being at the uh, second runner being near the front. Then we go back to Alan Hagen, the 59C. With the outside of him, Crump in the 63A. Evan Nickel in the 13C with the 2NZ of McPhee nearer the back. The last row of the grid will consist of the 1NZ of Lane and the 69 of Navin. So in this race, when you look at it, Navin has to get good points. Yeah, didn't get any points in the first heat, his first heat, and so he really does need to make some progress from the back of this group. Haig is not joining us for this race. He's okay. been turned around in the pit chute, and they're, man they're pushing the car back. The arms are up, so we're waiting for one car to come down the chute. I am picking it's going to be the 21S. And, of course, that's the other thing. As your grids rotate through the night, normally you look over and you can see the other drivers getting in their cars. There is a possibility you can lose track. And so he's really reliant on having a good pit crew and a clear understanding. We are still waiting. The arms are up. So we're looking at the pit chute. And... Pit gate's still open, so uh, the car's just circulating on track at the moment. We're waiting. Well, it's Another car to join us. to the point where the productions were coming up, and they're all being shooed to one side, because I can imagine when this modified comes down the chute, he's not going to be wasting any time. And we're not sure. I'm not sure who it is, but I'm picking. It's Newton Gorge. But we will wait for a minute. So Alan Haig, second race, no points. Mm. He's going to be heavily reliant tomorrow night on reaper charges, if that's the case. And from a Dan Ray's point of view, starting by himself on the front row is perfect. Yeah, it is Newton Gorge. So Newt's coming out the pit gate now. Can't rush these old timers, you know. So the front row will be complete. The 24 and the 21. Back then we go back to Lennon and the 19. Now he needs good points because he had a shocker in the first race. That's right. He, he was on the infield as well. And when... But what's fortunate when you look yeah, at the other groups everyone. is the likes of... The, of uh, Thompson, he's actually in the next race, so he hasn't had to turn his car as quickly. A little bit more time to fix that rear wheel issue that he had, yeah. And so the front row of the grid there, Newton Gorge in the 21 and the 24 of Dan Ray. They're both quick cars, and they're both uh, going to go for it, absolutely. Gary Lennon's going to be hot on their tail, and I don't know about Gary Parker. It, it, it went reasonably well in that first heat, so well, um, he could well hang with these guys. Go back to uh, Crump and Nickel, but the one who's going to want to get through this pack is the 2NZ of McPhee, Lane. And, and the 1NZ of, of Brad Lane. Hang, hang back for this one, Lane's going to go for it. So we're green and we're all racing and Dan Ray's away up the inside line, Newton Gorge cut, has to cut in behind him, Gary Lennon's on their tail as well. Um, everyone's got through one and two okay, and already Brad Lane's moved up a couple of places. Naben's got to try and stay with him, I think, to try and pull him through the uh, pack. Newton Gorge has got to the front as uh, Dan Ray had a bit of a moment there, and the nine of Lennon uh, is taken over second place. That moment being Newton's right rear. Was it? Oh, okay. I just <laughs> didn't, didn't catch that. So then we go back to the 21. There's a good battle between um, Crump and... Oh, we've got a car bouncing around out of turn four there. That was the 1NZ of Lane. Crump had a temporary little excursion onto the infield, but he's rejoined near the back of the pack. Out front, Gorge in the 21 machine. He's got a lead of about six or seven car lengths. He drifts very wide through three and four there. But Gary Lennon slowly closing him down. The 24 of Dan Ray keeping uh, Lennon honest as well. And then we go back to the two of McPhee, who's come through from near the back uh, and starting to make up some good ground. But I would say the quickest car on the track at the moment is probably the 1NZ of Brad Lane. He's absolutely going for it, now in fifth place. Fastest lap was McPhee there on the uh, previous lap. So McPhee and Lane absolutely going for it. Newton Gorge, he's holding on to a lead, but you get the feeling that Gary Lennon's closing on him and is going to make the pass sometime before the end of the race. Dan Ray can't really go with Gary Lennon and the 2NZ of McPhee is closing on the back of Dan Ray. Could be a pass there too before the race finishes. And Brad Lane, well, he's he's still making a lot of forward progress, but he's, he's got a bit of work to do to get past these guys in front. McPhee gets a good exit out of two, can't quite get alongside Dan Ray. Ray knows he's there now. He'll be a little bit defensive, I think. Newton Gorge is holding station. He's not allowing Gary Lennon to close up. 
I think the real battle here is for third place at the moment as Dan Ray bounces around the outside line and McPhee up the inside, easy as a knife through butter, takes the place. Brad Lane now looking at Dan Ray and is going to be thinking about um, making a similar pass, I'm sure, out of turn two. So Newton Gord, she's going to come up on a back marker in the next lap, I think. That's the 13 of uh, Evan Nicholl, who's actually having a pretty good um, run here, but um, hasn't got the pace of Newton Gorge. And Gary Lennon now closing right up on Gorge. We just need a couple more laps, and this could get very, very interesting. Will uh, Newton Gorge trip up on the 13? Will Gary Lennon? Oh, Gary Lennon just hits the brakes a little bit early there, loses a bit of momentum, and the 2NZ of McPhee is now closing on the back of the 9 car. Tight at the top here for the top three places. Gorge has got to wait, make his line past the 13 car, past the lap car. Almost a little bit of contact between McPhee and Lennon there. White flag this time round, one lap to go. Gorge has got past, Lennon's got past, McPhee's got past. Dan Ray is on the back of McPhee. They're coming into three and four. Anything could go wrong, but it doesn't because Newton Gorge takes the win. I thought for a second there we were going to see something happen, but um, they just all got round three and four um, neatly and fairly and um, to finish the race in that same order. To be f interesting, uh, some of the contact early in that race, if uh, Newton on the track's taken the race, Cochran versus Anderton, their greatest group, Gary Lennon back to McPhee, really interesting with some of the contact there. If Jacko got pinged for the contact, he caused it previous race, there's a fair chance New and Newton might want to just be a little bit nervous if the referee saw that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As, uh, yep, we've got a 50-50 draw being done behind us, and the productions will be up next. And we actually might as well just go straight to it, Tony. What's our 50-50 to this evening? We are going to find out it's um, You've drawn the number I know that. I've drawn the number it's gonna, if your ticket says meeting 14 and the ticket number is 876 meeting 14 ticket number 876 you have won $581 pop down to the souvenir stand at the uh, south end of the track and uh, the team down there will give you the money sounds uh, like a deal to me there's a Brad Lane here and he did move up through the pack so Brad Lane did as best as he could to get as much points. So now we're going to start to see this bit of the shuffle going on, Tony, as the guys that have done the front row starts, got the wins, but now we move through the pack. Guys like Lane and what have you will be... Um, this is a really good time for them. And the, uh well, look, here's the thing as I see it, OK? Um, chances are... I mean, anything can happen in a one-race final. We acknowledge that. But chances are that the New Zealand champion will be one of the, let's say, the top six cars, the front three rows of that 30-lap final yeah, tomorrow it's night, it's OK? Fair, it's so fair to make that, what, what you've got to do is if you've got a front row start, you've got to convert that to maximum points. And if you've got a rear start, you've got to convert that to places gained, OK? Because if you don't, someone else will, and they will nab one of those top six spots. So just watching the images on the Pits TV there, big thank you to them for um, a streaming of... Uh, Newton Gorge about to get out of his car. And uh, Aaron's down in the pits with the uh, 21 Newton Gorge. N Newton Gorge, we're just going to have a quick chat with you, mate. Winning that race, all good, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll probably get into trouble, but anyway. Yeah, you just touch a guy and next minute it's all hell let loose. But anyway, that's the way it is. Oh, so you had a little bit of a uh, little bit of a touch, was it, with, um, with, with Dan Ray there in turn three? Yeah, yeah, 24, I think it was the blue one. Yeah, 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 which is unfortunate. But anyway, um, I uh, don't, you don't deliberately do these things. For God's sake, we're running with no oil, pr oil water, fuel pressure at the moment, so we don't know what's going on. That's we're having troubles. Thanks for your time, Newton. I appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. This is going to be an interesting group as we wait for the grids to roll up on the screen. But uh, yeah. The 18 car of Jacob Mitchell. Now he wants to redeem himself because he's been relegated a couple of spots. So all the hard work he did in that last race. As we look to the grids here, courtesy of PG Hydraulics and Value Cars, the whole position is going to be the 11A of Jamie Fox. To the outside of him, Bunter Pierce. So here now, there, now he moves to the front row mm. in the 67S. 18C of Mitchell with the outside of him is Massey in the 11C. Bailey Patterson, the 5C with Steve Thompson, the 54GM. 
Hayden Corbett in the 22C beside him, the 53 of Hunter. And our last row looks like Mike Gurley with Sinclair in the 82C. So the back row is going to be pushing forward. Uh, Very much so. I know they've got the pace over a couple of those cars through there. But you've got Fox on pole and Bunter beside him. So once again, don't be surprised if we get that scenario where those one, two, three bolt. Yeah, look, I, I'm inclined to agree with you, and you, you, that's a very strong front row. Um, well, Fox won, um, you know, almost won that previous heat. He's, he's four-time New Zealand champion. Uh, he seems to be coming to grips with this uh, Woodford Glen circuit. Bunter Pierce, always strong around here. Um, probably happier off the front of a race than uh, at the back, I'd, I'd suggest. Uh, and at the back, you've got Mike Goulet and the four and the 82 of Stephen Sinclair. They're very, very quick, and they need to pass cars. They need to make some... Points. Well, don't take out the effect of uh, the stre- the uh, the having to get points that we've now put that uh, Thompson's put on himself. He has to go. He's got to get up that front. He's got to move forward. Yep. This can't be one of those where you sit back and see what happens. No. It's, uh, it's about getting points for these guys now because effectively the first heat's gone. Uh, you know, the likes of yep. Alan Haig now, the 59 car who's not on this heat as the previous one, he didn't make it out for the second heat. So they're reliant on ripper charges. And you Absolutely. Don't, you don't want to put yourself on. It's interesting, though, to be fair, the ripper charges have been in recent uh, history of Speedway. Quite often, New Zealand champions or podium places come out of ripper charges. So don't yeah, it's very true. expect that as well. But you still don't want to put that much stress on your machinery, your crew, um, everything, even your physical stamina in a night where they're going to be doing uh, two more races in a feature tomorrow. If you've got to throw in an extra race just to qualify to, the, to be on that final grid. And it's a very different scenario too to being coming through from a rapid charge and then joining a three heat finals night yes. as opposed to coming through from a rapid charge and being at the back of a 20 car grid. And of course the uh, some of these drivers we, we know that some of these drivers prefer the slicker tracks at the back end of the night so the drive would have uh, thrown one or two of them out. Although to be fair Brad Lane looked like he was just happy with that last one. Fox is just trying to keep the momentum up. Bunter, I wonder, is going to keep this because the, the lead two cars have to be side by side, but the pace setter is the outside car, That's much right. to the disadvantage of the person on pole. And Bunter clearly wants to keep it at a more pedestrian pace than the 11 car. And uh, I think we're having a little argument over here about track position too. Yeah, so keep your eye on 54 and uh, 4 and 82 from the back. The it's going to be interesting. Is, the fairy dust is down at 3. We're in the starter's hands. We are, Bunter Pierce is leading us through. We are on it and we are go. And it's a drag race. Fox versus Pierce. These two aren't giving any ground to each other. They are so, so close. We're going three wide with Sinclair mid-pack. He's just screamed round past four cars in the first corner. Out in front, it is Fox back to Pierce. Mitchell's trying to hang on to this. The front, front three have bolted. We predicted that. And it's a bit bouncy and a bit hairy out there. Look who's come through. Sinclair is almost upon the back of Thompson. Thompson is moving forward as well. Oh, we got really unsettled in the 67k. He did a little dance. It was like an Irish chick as he came off turn three. Oh, we've got Sinclair pulled to the infield. Well, I don't know if he got pulled or fired. Something's wrong with the 82 car. And so the 54 cars. 54 is stopping by the wall. And we're going to go yellow. So that'll be an incident that we didn't see. And I think Sinclair knows and he will go and rejoin where he feels he should be if he can. Has he lost a tyre out of this? Thompson couldn't buy luck if it was bad at the moment. <laughs> so we'll just wait on the Pits TV. I'm sure they'll be able to show us a little bit of a replay there that'll give us a bit of a hint as to um, what was going on. I much prefer Steve Thompson when he's happy though. His laugh, his laugh is infectious. We don't actually know what's happened here, but we're going to assume there's been a con- contact between the 82 and the 54, and if we're wrong, well, I'm sure we'll read about it. So well, 82 media. was coming through and was behind 54, so those two cars were in the same part of the track, weren't they, as they came through three and four on that lap. We were looking at the, um, the front of the, the race, but um, we're... Fox had opened up just a bit of a gap over Mitchell and uh, Bunter Pierce had dropped back. Okay, so we, we do have some replays, but not of it. We could see Bunter Pierce had a heck of a moment down at, at uh, Enviro Waste. The car sort of really unsettled, and that allowed Mitchell through. Now, both the 54 and the 82 cars, we, we, the 67 car just bicycling through three and four, just dug in. 
but uh, 54 really needed the points. It was he desperately needed the points in this race. The 82 car of Sinclair, he passed four cars in the first corner. Mm. He had done the hard yards. Yeah. He had really done a lot of work there and was coming through and something has happened there. We've missed it. Unfortunately, we haven't picked it up on the camera either. As we head to Enviro Waste, it is the 11 car in the lead. Back to Mitchell. We are in the starter's hands. We are racing. The revs build and we're gone. And Fox senses he's got a bit of clear air around him. Mitchell's going to have a crack though. He is on it right on. We move back to Pierce with Patterson and Gurley. The one who's going to make the moves here I'm picking is going to be the 4C of Mike Gurley. Bunters all out of shape. Bailey Patterson's parked himself on the wall. We're going to go for a restart here. The yellow will be on. That was a little unusual. It's like he just lost all... It's momentum. like he lost drive, yeah. I, 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 it was all... I don't think there was any contact there. I think it was just uh, all mechanical. Doesn't look like there's a huge amount of damage to the car. But he's... Fox has just got his confidence now. He's got that He does, ready. doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. And and so does Jacob Mitchell. Well, this is perfect for Gurley because the five car was the one he was about to pass mm. and uh, it's parked, parked down there at turn four. But this is going to be interesting because Bunter's car is not handling. It is something's not nice inside that 67 car to, uh, in this race. As the ace car rolls through, the car of Bailey Patterson. Pushed in there, I just wonder if he's just lost all drive. They've had a wee chat to Sinclair while he was on the infield. Probably a good place just to sit and calm down, to be honest, because you won't be in a happy space. The CSL container is 11 A car, so, so familiar at New Zealand titles. Well, he's won four. There are multiple two NZs and three NZs. They don't give and them away either. No, they so don't. It's been, it's been really, you'd have to say, the dominant driver in this grade over 20 years or well, more. I guess probably. since the retirement of Roger Bertram, probably, yeah, yes. Yeah. And uh, Mitchell, one of the up and comers in the uh, ex Glen Leach Love Lady chassis. Back to Bunter Pierce. And then Mike Gurley, we're racing once again. And Foxy just leaves them for it. Mitchell's going to come in hard and fast in the 18K. He's got that low line, but I sense that Foxy just has the drive out of two. We go back to Bunter, and then Gurley in the four. And Gurley not catching the, the 67 car like he printed. Mitchell looked to the inside of the 11, had to back out of it. Car squatted down, got really unsettled down the front straight. Pierce having a go back at the 18, but Fox is in command of this race. Across the start finish line once again, it is the CSL car. Back to Mitchell. He's going. Mitchell has way more momentum going into turn one, but Fox has better drive coming off too. They head down to Enviro Waste. This is where the race is being won. Fox just keeps it smooth through there. He's found the groove that he wants to sit in, and Bunter's car is the track has come to him. Gurley isn't hasn't got the forward momentum on the 67 car to do it, to even catch him, let alone make a pass. And actually the 22 car of Corbett looks like he's catching Gurley as well. As we clock down another lap. Jamie Fox comfortably in the lead. He's opened the gap almost the length of the grandstand over Jacob Mitchell. As we head through Enviro's, Bunter Pierce comes into Enviro Waste super quick. Gets a little taily. Gurley's car, something's wrong with it. He's up high and uh, almost like he's washing out. And the 22 car of Corbett's having a crack. Yeah, do we look? Gurley's got enough on a straight line. As we head through Enviro West once again, Fox Pot crosses for another one. Back to Mitchell, Pierce. Now Gurley's found his groove. He's taken him the best part of six laps to find him. But he's pulled away on the 22 car. But alas, I think he might, he might run out of laps to catch Bunter Pierce at this point. Mitchell's car not quite as smooth through Enviro West. But doing enough. A little unsettled going into one. He lost a little bit of time there. Bunter caught him. Fox is gone. You know, he's going to be yeah. back eating, he's going to be back in the pits eating a hot dog before the rest of the guys finish. Bunter comes in hard into three. And Mike Gurley's right there. Start. Brian's picked up the white flag. So as Fox comes around next lap, he will pick up the white flag. The battle's here between Bunter and Gurley. 
And if Bundy gets out of shape here, Mike's going to gobble him up. He gets way taily. Gurley's all over the back. Mitchell's running second at the moment. We're on the last lap. Fox is going to go past the Valley Cars Warehouse Grandstand. He's just going to bring it home. The battle is for third. Mitchell's comfortably second. Bunter leads us for third into Enviroway. Fox has taken the race win. Back to Mitchell. And heavily defending, it is Bunter Pierce for third. Wow. Jamie Fox showing all of his class and then some there. Um, Jacob Mitchell, great drive. Really, really good drive from a young fella. Um, didn't really look like he was ever going to get close to, to Fox or pass him, other than possibly in that first lap or so. Um, but similar lines and um, similar commitment, and that will have done his confidence a world of good. That's probably the best I've seen Jacob run. To yeah, be fair. He I would agree. He got a little unsettled down the front straight here. When the car sits back down on the left rear, it was uh, really making it a handful. But bear in mind, even when Glenn Leach, oh no, that's not that, that, that was the chassis that he liked. That was the one he wanted to keep. And uh, they put Jacob into it, and that one, interesting to note though, front, front right tyre on the 18 car is now flat. Mm. So he was fighting that through that race. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Bunter Pierce, the 67 car, he was fighting that car through a lot of that race as well. Um, it's one of the joys that car of modifieds. Was you just don't have the adjustability that you have. You don't then. have the adjustability, and they seem, uh, how can I put it, they seem um, really sensitive to setup, more sensitive than a saloon car is. Um, they, 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 you get it slightly wrong, it's wrong, yes, you know, yeah. um, in, a, in a modified. It's, um, yeah, if you get it, it's a long way back. I guess in a super saloon, and uh, most of the, the modern supers have got some sort of weight adjustment or weight checkers in them. You don't have that in one of these. In a sprint car, you've got all sorts of things you can tweak and push and pull and whatever you need to do. Um, but in a modified, you, you basically bolt the drivers to the seat and yeah. hopefully they, they're the adjustability of the car. <laughs> so you, you, and I guess that's where the racecraft, that's where you see someone like a Jamie Fox, who has the ability to adapt. He's raced every track in the country. He knows what he's doing. Okay, we're just in the pit chute. Everyone is heading out now. There is former champions. There is ex-New Zealand cricketers in this in this race, the 3NZ. We're getting down to the business end of the qualifying for this evening. So enjoy. Back to the commentators. So we get to turn the page, um, Jared, over to event 12 in the program. Uh, Value Cars Warehouse bringing us this race, which is the Edge Parts versus the Coken Group. So that puts us at heat to six. Front row is going to be Ian White, 32 GM. To the outside of Nathan Astle in the 10C car. Evan Nickel in the 13C will be in the second row. To the outside will be Jacko in the 71S. We move through to Daniel Crump in the 63A. 3NZ Luke Brown to the outside of him. Parker in the 21H with Dan Ray beside him. And rounding us out, it is Jason Scott in the 88T and the 1NZ of Lane. This has all the air hallmarks, Tony, of being a very, very interesting race. It does, doesn't it? Brad Lane yet again <laughs> Brad Lane um, yet again starting off the back as he did in the previous uh, heat he was in. He did, so I guess that means that tomorrow night tomorrow he's going to be near the front. He's going to have a couple of front so, starts, so surely. He yeah. some good yeah. work in this. Uh, obviously Jack, Jacko, uh, he got pinged for hitting Ian White in the last race. Um, Ian White and Nathan Estill off the front, back to Evan Nickel. That is going to be it. Jacko's going up beside Evan Nichols, so he's just going to have to lock, lock in there. But Luke Brown, he's got pace. We know the one NZ car can come through. We haven't seen the best of the 88 of Scott. And uh, to be honest, Gary Parker really has struggled tonight. It hasn't yes, he been has. The, uh, he, he's dropped back in, and I just think that the uh, the turn three, so those of you watching on the stream at home, courtesy of uh, Pitts TV and Gary 16, it's a lot tighter through turns three and four, the car pool end of the track, or what we call Enviro Waste, than it is at the Christchurch end of the track, which is big, open, flowing, you can drive in there. You've got to drive into three and four differently, but the widest part of the track is actually where they're, pu where they're putting the white dust down for the start, the cars to be mm. side by side. That is actually the widest part of any part of our track. So if you're brave, carry the momentum and run up high by the wall off the exit, you can actually come through three and four very smoothly. The problem is you've got to run up by the wall and that is not something a lot of drivers like to do coming off turn four. That's right. Luke Brown, yeah, it, he's got something else too, which is um, a little bit of patience, hasn't he? I, I wouldn't expect to see him go hell for leather in the first lap, 
Um, he's starting sort of mid-pack here. Um, I do expect he'll be near the front by the end of this race. But um, well, it's the old adage: the cheapest tool in the toolbox is the tool, is, your, is patience, and it's the one that's most seldom used. It's yeah, yeah, very so true, very true. So, but we do not uh, have the 24 car out there. No, the 24 of Dan Ray has not joining us out there, which is ominous for his chances. And once again, I guess it vindicates this multi-heat format where if you drop a race, you can still pick up something later in the night. Just looking to the pit shoot. No, he hasn't missed the gate. He just no, hasn't been he able just to make hasn't it. come out. So keep an eye on the 1NZ off the back. He's going to make some progress. Keep an eye on the 3NZ from mid-pack. He's going to make some progress forward. Um, and that front row of uh, Ian White and Nathan Astle may get gobbled up by the cars behind them. Let's see. We're about to go green. We're about to go racing. And away we go, and Nathan Astle leads us around the outside. But the 71 of uh, Jacko looking very sharp there. Has to go quite high and deep into one, and he cuts back. He's going to look for the inside line in three and four. Everyone's got through uh, the back straight OK. So we're just about to complete a lap. Nathan Astle has got that 10 car fair humming at the moment. And uh, Jacko trying to come back at him, but uh, Astle's got the line to be able to shut him down. Luke Brown's come through into third place. Ian White dropping back there, and there's the 1NZ car. Not far behind Ian White. He's made up a lot of ground already. Crump in the 63 cars keeping station there, and there's quite a few at the back. The 21, the 88, and the 13 all racing together. Looks as though the 88's got real issues with uh, some drivetrain issues there. Sparks coming off the back of that car. So Nathan Astor in the 10 machine. He's got uh, three or four car lengths over Jackson in the 71, who's just nipped around the outside of the 3NZ car. We've got a few car lengths back to Ian White, who's having a good battle with the 1NZ. Brad Lane should be able to take him at some point, but Ian White, he's a crafty campaigner, and he's going to make it hard for Lane. Lane slips up the inside there. White could have chopped him off, but he didn't. Thought better of it. Brad Lane takes over fourth place, but that's cost him a bit of time, and the front three have got away a little bit from Brad Lane. So Astor in the 10, he's got about four or five car lengths over Jackson in the 71, who's barely a car length ahead of the 3NZ of Brown. Rapidly coming back, uh, further back is the 1NZ car, and dropping back a little further is the 32 of Ian White and the 63 of Crump, the other three just not in it. So Nathan Astor having very definitely his best race of the night, his best race for a long time here at Woodford Glen. That 10 car fair humming along now, and he's got a good lead over the 3NZ of Luke Brown, who in turn has got uh, four or five car lengths over Jackson in the 71, and the 1NZ car still holding on to fourth place, but not able to make a lot of progress on these front three. Get the feeling that the uh, best of the track has uh, been and gone for Brad Lane, and um, whereas for Nathan Astor, he's just absolutely giving it heaps. Luke Brown closing on him. You'd expect Luke Brown to be just a little quicker, uh, but he's got a long way to go to catch Astor. Astor has uh, the lead, and he's not going to give it up in a hurry. So down the back straight, past the Value Cars Warehouse Grandstand, into Enviro Ace Turn, goes Nathan Astor in that basic Transport 10C car. He's leading the three instead of Luke Brown. They're getting past the uh, lap traffic, the 13 of Evan Nickel there. That's allowed the 1NZ to close on the back of 71, but I don't know if he's going to have enough laps left to do much about it. Astle takes the white flag now. Luke Brown, I think, is going to have to settle for second place here, and it's a long way back to the battle for third. Will Brad Lane be able to get past Jacko on the last corner? He'll probably give it a go. Comes in pretty hot, but he thinks better of it. He just takes the inside line, and Jacko's got just enough. <laughs> coming out of four to uh, take the third place. Brad Lane wasn't going to die wondering, was he? He wasn't, was he? No. And to be fair, probably the, one of the best runs we've seen of Nathan Astor in the uh, the basic number 10. Absolutely hauling. And you just kind of wonder, given I saw Greg Keegan lurking in the pits, and that being Luke Keegan's old car, whether he's been down had a wee ah, right. chat to him. Um, but Luke Brown, he started on six, finished on two. He picked up four spots. Yep. Four extra points. Uh, you look at the 1NZ, he started on the back in 10th, and he came home 4th. So he's picked up 6 spots. These are valuable points. So Brad Lane is leading on points at the moment. Still one round to go, though. So there's still a whole bunch of guys in the mid-teens that, that haven't uh, 
that haven't tallied the points, but at the moment it is Lane, McPhee, Brown, Fox, Gorge, Pierce. But the next heat, the next three, the next three heats will determine the points for night one, and then we get to do it all over again tomorrow night. Absolutely. So uh, more heats tomorrow night before we do the big final at the end of the night, and of course rapid charge is tucked in there as well. Um, we, we, we did have a referee stick his head in the things. I've got to talk to you guys. I've got so much to tell you. And um, indeed. So, no doubt so we'll, we'll, we'll try and catch up with that and back very shortly. Okay, we're down here with Nathan Esselme. Got out there, got out in the front, and um, went pretty damn good. Yeah, it's always nice to have clear air in it and nothing in front of you, but you've still got to make those count. Had a pretty average first heat, went back a couple of places. So, yeah, get one under the belt and a win and get 10 points is, is bloody good. Yeah, absolutely, because you guys had a little bit of engine trouble. You managed to get the car all back together, and you've made it here to the New Zealand champs because this is your first year in the class. So that that's something at least. Yeah, exactly, man. I think I'm lucky to be here. I've had a bit of bad luck this year. I think I've only done, like three full meetings so this is my fourth so loving the class loving the guys um just just enjoying being involved and obviously your support's even better yeah magic mate no we really appreciate that so um so yeah we hope that the rest of your meeting goes as good as that last heat for you mate yeah we're off the back the next one so a bit of, bit of work but hey just got to enjoy it don't you oh good mate well hopefully we're crossing over to vince in the uh pit shoot <laughs> you sure are i am here with 24c dan ray um it's not all fun games for you mate um i after Newton Gorge 21S got relegated, something happened and you have been kicked out of the New Zealand Championships. Can you tell us what's happened? Yeah, um, we sort of got together after after the yellow. But it wasn't intentional on my part. I sort of just gave him a hand gesture and then we ended up... It doesn't, it doesn't look good from, for me anyway. So, yeah, that's, that's that. And now, now weekend's done, so yeah. So essentially it stemmed from the incident that happened in, in turn uh, three and four where it, he came across or hit you and then and then afterwards you came up and just gave him a hand, you just rubbed him and then it turned into something you didn't intend to and now you've, the blame's placed at your feet and your weekend's over. Is that pretty much it? Yeah, 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 yeah. that's it. Um, yeah, I don't know how someone can get away with consistently hitting cars in the same corner every race and still be able to race. So it just doesn't make sense to me that... It's not my decision, so... Yeah. All right, well, I'm really sad to see that you're out of the championships. You were, you're one of my favourites, but um, we're going to cross now to the next heat of the Gary 16 New Zealand Modified Champs. So uh, here we go. Uh, we're we... into the final stretch now, uh, Jared. the final three heats. Yes, it is. Recreation Hotel versus PG Hydraulics Group. The front row will be the Rocketman 99C of Ralph Bogdan Pole. Jacob Mitchell's having a blind of a run. He'll be on the outside of him. Hayden Corbett in the 20 seat beside him, Atama Holland in the 48 GM. Then we move back to Kevin Bannon in the 49 C, having a quiet night to the outside of him, yep. the 53 of uh, Hunter. Then we go back to Parkinson and the 4 C of Mike Gurley. And the last row will be Kalen in the 12 S to the outside of him, Fox. Once again, has the hallmarks of an interesting race. It does, doesn't it? Um, with the 11 car off the back row there. He's, he's been fast. He's been very fast tonight. You wouldn't expect anything less than that. And he's going to be quick off that back row. He's going to pick his way through this field. Brandon Parkinson um, needs some points. He needs to make some forward progress as well. And yet off the front, you've got Jacob Mitchell, the young guy who's um, absolutely going for it, taking every um, opportunity that comes his way. And you'd have to say the battle with, between him and uh, the wily old fox of uh, Ralph Godwin is going to be an interesting one. Well, both of them are in ex Glen Leach cars. Yeah. Um, both of them in LRC chassis. Both of them off the uh, front row. Definitely a slight age gap between the two of them. Mm. <laughs> um, and uh, But it is all about accumulating points. So there's that bit where you've got to go and you've got to get the points, but there's also a bit where you've still got to have a car to race tomorrow. Now, for the for all of this group, this is their last run tonight. Yep. 
So we're coming. into the last series of heats for tonight. Yes. There's another two heats for every driver tomorrow night before the record charges and then the final. And uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, do the, the the sort of the heart goes out to Dan Ray for what's happened. Um, certainly, we saw it. Actually, ironically, we saw this actually the exact same thing happen in productions yep. saloons last weekend here at Battle of the Last weekend at Battle of the Stars. It was last weekend. Losing track of the week. Um, and no, sorry, State of Origin was last week. Yep. We saw exactly the same thing and the same consequences occurred yep, for those did. drivers. So we I guess in that, consistent in that penalty. Yep. In the con it's her, yeah, and I guess that's one of the things with. Uh, how severe it is the uh, the fixed penalty schedule whether we like it or love it doesn't it leaves once it's a statement of fact and something's happened it's the same penalty so yep. I, I feel for Dan a lot of effort goes into getting to this part of the season I mean this is for a lot of guys this is the highlight of their racing season and uh, you know things happen in the heat of the moment so it is what it is as much as there's a cliche these days absolutely so they're winding up now jacob mitchell off the front with ralph godwin plenty of fast cars further back though let's see how this one unfolds mitchell gets the jump and uh, so does the 48 of holland he goes into the back of godwin there's contact all through the pack that was what you'd affectionately refer to as a cluster <laughs> <laughs> Um, Godwin's got some Far damage out of this. Yeah. That was a terrible, terrible start. And uh, we're going <laughs> to, no doubt, we'll get to see a replay because all eyes were on the start. Godwin's, that's his, uh, that's his heat race done. Well, Mitchell got away. He got away to a good start. Godwin didn't make a good start. Atama Holland saw the opportunity to follow Mitchell round the outside line. And for whatever reason, there was contact there. And then it was just a. Um, uh, a yeah. concertina effect back through the field as various cars. As we watch it, Atama, actually I think Ralph ran over the front wheel of Atama and bounced in there and he's dropped back down. How the cars following the likes of Kalen and Ban didn't it end up a whole lot worse. But when we watch it on the replay, Atama looks like he's managed to pull up beside Ralph. But somewhere in all of that... And Ralph wouldn't even have known the 48 no. car was there. He's driven over his right front wheel. So Atama's actually turned into, well, he hasn't caused the contact, but the big right rear has climbed over Atama's wheel, and Ralph would not have known that car was there. So we'll call it a racing incident, but uh, I guess what would have happened had Ralph not driven over the wheel? Was the 48 car just going to plough into the side of the 99? Because mm. that's the direction it was taken. It was, it was the, yeah, it was definitely the way it was going. Parky, out of all of this... When you actually watch it, the five car, how he avoided it, um, I would say that he wasn't. We watched the, f the 99 car go in the air, and Kevin Band's actually on the pole line here. Hayden Corbett's there. They're watching this. So Corbett has to go high. Ban is just caught. He's got nowhere to go, and it looks like you know, Kalen's joined in, and he's going to be lifted off to the infield. As you say, he was right at the back, and, and, and if anything, reasonably gentle contact, but enough to uh, break some front suspension components there. Well, the cars aren't the heaviest, and the parts aren't the strongest. You know, they no. are they are yeah. kind of a sprint car in disguise. race cars, yeah. That's, uh, but the jump that Mitchell got off that start there really is proving to be a dark horse. Uh, you'd, also, you'd also be tempted if you were friends or family to go put a sneaky amount of the pet TAB on them for that oh, one, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing well. He's doing really, really well. As we look through, so out of all of that, we've only lost two. Okay, and 48 is the prime cause back of the field. So that's pretty much how we see it on the video. You watch it again and again, and you think, well, there's nothing Ralph could have done. No. Ralph. Um, so Atama, either his radio is broken or <laughs> something is up, uh, but he has been a judge primary cause. So Ralph Godwin's out, front wheel of that car is, um, well the front suspension of that car is definitely mangled. Uh, Kalen's out, the front suspension is just a little bit mangled, but enough to mean that he can't carry on. Rest of the field uh, look okay, but uh, Tom Holland gets put to the back as being deemed the prime cause of the incident. And indeed the video does show that. I'm sure he sees it differently, but there is a no way that Ralph would have even have known when he was there. And if, to be fair, to, to be fair to Ralph, if he had, uh, if he hadn't have been, if he had weren't coming to a corner, what was about to happen is he was probably about to get reverse flicked. Mm. So, 
Street Stocks were last weekend. So we restart uh, with Jacob Mitchell off the uh, front there on his own now because uh, Ralph Godwin on the infield, of course. And um, also a car missing off the second row. Be Caelan. Yeah. So here we go. We're a bit slow and pedestrian, but Jacob Mitchell gets the jump. And away he goes into the distance. Hayden Corbett in the 22 in second place for the moment. 53 of Hunter's looking good. A little bit of... No, I don't think it was contact further back, but it was Brandon Parkinson just had to come off the throttle slightly and uh, almost into the back of Foxy. But Mitchell has got a lead. Hayden Corbett, or Kevin Band's uh, taken the front straight on the uh, infield there. Not quite sure what that was about. Foxy trying to thread the needle comes through past Parkinson. Parkinson's car just doesn't look as if it's quite doing what he wants it to do. And uh, Jamie Fox took advantage there. Coming up the inside of Hunter now, he's passed about three or four cars in the space of one lap, and he's into fourth place. Class. Class driving by the 11 car. But Jacob Mitchell's out front, and he has got clear air in front of him, clear air behind him. All he needs to do is focus on his lines, focus on getting the uh, throttle control 100% right, and just bring this one home. Hayden Corbett having the race of his life in second place there with uh, Mike Goulet tucked in behind him. Will Goulet hunt him down and pass? He's probably got the more powerful car. He's got a little bit of uh, time to work that. He's going to have to defend against the 11 of Fox, though, because Fox is closing on Goulet faster than Goulet's closing on Corbett. Something's Jake. bent in the front of Parkinson's car. It just won't settle down at all. Yeah, I thought there was some issue there. He's just, he hasn't got the pace that car should have. So Mitchell down the back straight, past the Valley Cars Warehouse Grandstand. He's got the whole back straight over the 22 of Corbett, who's got about uh, seven or eight car lengths over the four of Mike Goulet, who is gradually falling into the clutches of the 11A car. So that's it. Those four are gone. Behind them, we've got Kevin Ban, Atama Holland, the uh, somewhat misbehaving um, 5GM car, Barry Hunter, at the back of the field and Jacob Mitchell just carries on his merry way he just needs to keep focus keep concentrating bring this one home Corbett's holding off Goulet for the time being and Fox just seems to have dropped off the back of Goulet a little bit not sure if these positions are going to change much by the end of the race Goulet closing on Corbett a little bit there Fox closing on Goulet but There's not a lot between these cars. Hayden Corbett having a great run here. He'll be thrilled with the way that 22 machine's going. But he got a little bit sideways out of four there, and that's allowed Goulet to close up. And I just wonder if a pass on the 22 is going to be coming up shortly. Mitchell um, puts a, la a lap down on the 53 car. Foxy keeping um, Goulet under very close observation there slightest misstep and he's going to push that 11 car into a gap white flag now for jacob mitchell all on his own half a lap ahead of second place car of hayden corbett who's holding off mike goulet fox goes just a little deeper and wider to see if there's a bit more grip out there but he doesn't really find it he drops off the back of goulet a little bit so there's your win to mitchell second place hayden corbett probably his best drive of the season and third place, Mike Goulet, just ahead of the 11 of Jamie Fox. Uh, final battle down there in the year, the uh, 5 GM car handling like an absolute pig. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that Parky was battling that one. Didn't think Mike Gurley was actually going to go through to where he did, but he still picked up four or five spots in that race. He did. And I guess this is about a quiet achievement. And when we get the... Uh, the rollout of the points. You've still got to be in that top 14 cars. As we look at the moment, Jacob Mitchell was actually topping it with Jamie Fox behind him by one point, and then Brad Lane. Although, to be fair, we still have a couple more heats. Yep. Some, of the, some of the top drivers still yet to complete another heat. So the yeah. points don't really mean an awful lot at this point in time. But a great uh, result for Jacob Mitchell, though. Yes, Coming a really into this good weekend, drive. you would not have picked that. Gurley sitting there on 22 points, probably done enough to. Uh, comfortably get through and of course even if those points are a little bit shuffled at the end of the night we have two more heats tomorrow as part of the garage 16 new zealand modified title here at coke and woodford glen as we look to the shoot it'll be the productions out next and the modified will clean up their little mess and i'm sh and uh, we'll be back with you shortly
Hayden C, Jacob Mitchell here. You're the winner of the last heat. You won the week, heat before that. You got a blind of a night, mate. And you didn't just win that race. You won that by more than half a lap. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, just driving hard. I'm loving this driver track at the moment. So hopefully tomorrow night's features drive as well. It's a shame that first race allows down bit though, but we'll be, we'll be all right. Two wins, can't complain. And I got it done on track this time. <laughs> so right. And I mean, your campaign for the New Zealand title is well underway. What do you think of your chances so far? Because you're looking pretty good to make it to the feature final. And the way you're driving, i got to say, you're looking on the money. Oh, well, yeah, I've had my back grid, which I gained a few spots. And then I've had my two front ones now. So we'll see what our mid-back ones will do. Excellent. Well, good luck for the rest of the night, mate. We're going to throw it over to Aaron in the pit shoot for the modifieds for the next heat. So modifieds uh, will be coming out next, brought to us by Challenge Wymac. Okay. The uh, Anderton. All right. So we're here in the um, we're here in the pit shoot, and they're just about to go out. The uh, track's holding up really, really well, even given all the heat tonight. So we've got Andrew Nave in there. He's ready to go out. Jacko, ex champ, he's there as well. So they're about to pull out, go out, and I think it's the second to last heat for this qualifying for tonight. Um, so make sure you catch up with all of the leaderboards and everything that the Pits TV are putting up at the end of the race and then you'll know where all your favourite drivers stand. So from here though, it's back to the commentary team. Yeah, so second to last heat for the night. Uh, the Anderton Decorators Group versus the Edge Parts Group. Uh, this is heat eight out of uh, nine tonight. And it's just looking at Jacob Mitchell there, Tony, it's, mm. he should get sponsored by Gillette because when he starts shaving he might need it. <laughs> So he is so young, isn't he? I mean, he's what he is 18, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, yeah he's 18, uh, and he's and he's piloting that modified, um, like uh, a really old bugger. You know, <laughs> experienced campaigner. I think An experienced was campaigner. Oh, was that was that the phrase I should have used? Yeah, but I mean, really, seriously, he and, he. And here's our grids for the ends of the decorators versus the edge parts of performance. Pole position will be given to the 71S of John Jackson. The outside of him, the 69C of Andrew Navin. Then we move back to Hagen, the 57C. I'm just going to double check if he's actually on the track. It doesn't look it at the moment. Don't think the it's outside there. of him will be in the second row, Newton Gorge in the 21S. Third row will be Ian White in the 32 GM to the outside of him, Jason Scott. Jason finally getting to move up through the grids tonight. Luke Brown in the 3NZ and Gary Lennon in the 9C. The final row of the grid will be Astle in the 10C with the outside of him, Blair McPhee. And I think we've got one or two missing. We've got quite a few missing out of that lot, haven't we? We should have um, 10 cars well, the gate's on the closed. track. And we've got... Um, well, Haig's not there at all. So that's... Uh, nine. So we are just missing the one. Is it the ha Alan, Alan Haig? And we'll see Jacko move up. And the 69 car, of course, not a great start. Is uh, he, he needs points to qualify. And yeah, uh, Andrew Navin, he didn't have a good first um, round, didn't have a good second round. He really does need to uh, capitalise on this front row start here. Jason's got there in the 88 car. We haven't seen the best of Jason in this car. We've, saw, we've seen Hayden Mackay in this car give it a good run, but Jason, I don't know whether it's just the difference between this and the sprint car or whether it's our track, but we just haven't seen what Jason's capable of yet. We haven't, have we? I mean, you'd have to say it's a it's a very mid-pack car at the moment. But, it, the, but, but the we have seen it win races here. But in the we know it's got potential. We know it's got but considerable it potential. It was sparking for profusely in that last race off the rear brakes, which we know is has they have had issues with before. Of course, that is the um, one of the edge parts of performance cars because Jason is the man behind edge parts of performance. Indeed. So Newton Gorge on his own in the. Uh, second row of the grid there, that's where Alan Haig should be. Um, Nathan Astle, who won that previous heat before, he's right off the back, along with the 2NZ. I'd look for those two to start making some progress through, but Luke Brown, the 3 and Z's ahead of them, and I think he'll probably stay ahead of them, Jared. And I'd be picking that we're going to see Newt shoot straight in behind Jacko. Let Jacko do a bit of work, get, get them clear, but we're going to see, there is a bit of space there. Ian White, he has the opportunity to do the move up the inside, but Let's be fair, the Taranaki boys know how to close doors. <laughs> yep. Out front. Jacko leads us round. It is refreshing as opposed to watching street stocks where they only have black paint. <laughs> you see my um, as we are ready to go racing, we're all moving, we're all gridded. Astle's just pulling in. The pace is set by the 69 car. We are 
Coming through Enviro Waste, the green is waved, we are gone. And Ian White shot tried to cut the inside of the, the 21. Jacko's in the lead. Here comes Gorge, and he just moves over on the 69 car. As Andrew Naven looked to duck to the inside. Out in front, it is Jackson, back to Gorge. Gary Lennon looking to make moves on the outside of Ian White. And something's gone wrong. Astle tried to get in there. Luke Brown capitalised on all of that. And as we head down the back straight, we are quite unsettled through that mid-pack. Out in front, the two Gorge cars are off to it. Jason Scott Sparks are flailing out of the back of that off the brakes. And he's racing with his branch manager. <laughs> and then we go back to Brown. Now, Brown's in that interesting predicament. He can take easy spots, but it's not worth risking points at this point. McPhee has come through. He's got through Lennon, uh, Lennon in the nine car. Every time he hits turn one, the car's unsettling. It's just, it's almost like it's too tight. It just jumps out of line. He's coming back at white. Now, Astor at the back end of the track, not having a great, great run. Almost a coming together there between the two edge cars as they came off for Luke Bro, the 88 car bouncing out of shape, just so much grip, it just hooked in with the right hand side. Luke Brown looked to go up the inside of him and he's closed the door on him. And Gary Lennon struggling with that car. It's like he's fighting to turn he's it. He's fighting corners. it without a doubt. Yeah. It's just like it's just like it's almost like it's too tight. It just doesn't want to turn in. Out in front though, it is John Jackson and he's using all the track. So is Newton Gorge in the 21. Out to the wall. Absolutely just wringing the necks on the big V8s. Jason Scott sitting back there. Luke Brown can sense an opportunity, and McPhee is within striking distance on Brown. Now, these two guys in the 3 and 2 and 3 and Z and 2 and Z can't risk playing silly games with cars that haven't got points. So, some, it might be easier just to lose a point and let it drop, sit back. But McPhee, he's going to have a crack here. He, he wants it, doesn't he? He wants that place. But I guess the other thing is he can trust Brown. Brown's not going to do anything stupid. And Brown's going to conserve the car. The guys in front, they're a little bit erratic for Brown. You can see Brown just sitting back. Doesn't want to get caught in any of this. Jacko's gone. He is, well, he's got most of the front straight over Newt. And Newt's probably got about the best part of 30 metres over the 69 car. But bearing in mind that the 69 and 88 are so far down in points, it doesn't affect Luke Brown or Blair McPhee. True as Jacko's out there, and also bear in mind that the other two cars at the front have been relegated throughout the night. So these guys just need to keep it clean and bring it home in one piece. Here comes McPhee. And McPhee sticks the nose up on the uh, 3NZ. Backs out of it. White flag is out for Jacko. The two edge cars are racing wheel to wheel and they are getting very close, but McPhee is all over the back of Luke Brown. Jacko's past the Value Cars Warehouse Grandstand. He will come through Enviro Waste. He will take the race win. John Jackson takes away Heat 8. Looks like Newton Gorge will come through for second. And the 88T car of Jason Scott. Out of all of that, the battle between Brown and McPhee went the way of Brown. It did, didn't it? And, um, yeah, interesting that they couldn't really make much... Um, impression on the two cars in front of them Navin and uh, Scott you might be right, that was a choice maybe, not to uh, get involved well you um, can see the maybe 88 was... 69 were a little erratic Yep. discretion uh, is the better part of valour as they say, and maybe uh, there was a decision made by both drivers there that they'd rather just sit back and bank those points than uh, risk everything to get one or two more so looking at that, Mitchell, Gorge Brown are all um all, all top in the points table and the fourth place car is Jamie Fox and he was in that year so we're starting to see out of those uh, those first two heats a bit of a clear run and we'll get to see well just looking at the cars that are in I don't actually think any of the cars in heat nine are going to change those top points no they might not but um, they might come through and you know you bank 12 points from further down and you could be in, in that mix so I yes. guess we'll see. But um, remember, the points don't really wash out evenly until we've completed all five heats for each driver. And that will be at the end of the heat racing tomorrow evening, mid-evening tomorrow. It will um, be. It's only then that you can make a valid comparison between one driver's points and another. So, um, yeah. It certainly is as we watch the, uh, 
the slime green 71 is. <laughs> <laughs> what other colour would you call it? It is. Uh, the uh, the Murray Gorge Engineering 71 himself, John Jackson. And uh, Jack has done a fair few laps over the years. Former New Zealand title holder. Um, I think all the Gorge green cars have been winning. I think they have been. I think you're right. OK, we're with the 71S. Jacko, you're here from Stratford, mate. You've had a fairly consistent night, and in that last race you took a win. Yeah, like, well, I had to really. Malcolm Nartai said to me at the start of the night, if you don't win the third one, just pack it up and go home. <laughs> oh, well, lucky you did what you're told then. <laughs> you're going to get the message from a great. So, hey, look, we were, we were having a bit of a look at our crashes and close calls videos this morning, and the last image was of this 71S banging into the Dean Owens car and the rear tyre exploding everywhere. So it has been a much better start to the championship for you, Jacko. So um, I hope that all continues for you, mate. Yeah, no, nah, thanks a lot. Yeah, we'll just keep it clean and just finish finish the races mate and see what happens. Awesome mate, all the best to the rest of the champs, cheers. Cheers mate, thanks. Go out for the final night, uh, for the final race of the night of the championship, we've got 5GM, Brandon Parkinson, he's actually in the lead for his group and out there we also have 67S Bunter Pierce, two time national champion, he is leading on points in his group. So those two drivers are going to be wanting to get through this race nice and cleanly, we've got plenty of other excellent talent out there and a lot of drivers making such effort to get those points for tonight so let's go back to the track and see what happens for this very final uh, race of the night for the Garage 16 so the New Zealand Modified Championship for tonight but not the last heat overall because we've no. got another two rounds of heats tomorrow another six heats overall yeah, so if we do the 15 heats but we are at heat number nine and then tomorrow night we head through to complete it and then big shuffle as we look at our grids this is the Recreation Hotel group versus the Value Cars group Front row is Steve Thompson in the 54 GM, just checking if he's still there. Atama Holland in the 48 GM beside him. Kalen in the 12 S beside him will be Bunta Pierce in the 2067 Then we go back to Sinclair in the eight, on the inside on five. To the outside of him, Kevin Van the 49 C. Then Brandon Parkinson with the outside Massey in the 11 C car. And the final row of the grid it is Bailey Patterson in the 5 C with the 99 of Ralph Godwin. And I think that's actually the second time he's been on the very last grid tonight. Yeah. So hopefully from Ralph's perspective that's the end of his back grids. We'll get to see in the big wide wash at the end of all of this where we all sit on points. And uh, but that front row... The 54 GM. So there's a number of cars here that need to pull finger. Yes. And get on with it. Um, the 54 car. Rotten luck tonight. Well, with, um, with that being rude, all of them bar Bunter seem to have had a yeah. shocker. <laughs> yeah. 54 definitely needs uh, points. Atama Holland, bit of a brain fade in that last um, race. Definitely needs some good points. Jason Kalen didn't uh, finish the previous uh, round. He needs points. Bunter Pierce fighting that car at times tonight. He needs to find a good setup. Steve Sinclair had to pull out of that uh, previous race, so he needs good points tonight. 5GM, same story. Cassandra Massey, she's been passed a fair bit tonight, so you know she needs a good finish here. Ralph Godwin, he was on the infield. And uh, Bailey well, no Patterson. Fault of, no fault of his own either, I might no, add. Indeed, and Bailey Patterson also finished up on the infield. So pretty much the whole field here tonight in this race need to get a good result. They are not just want to get a good result, they need a good result if they're going to finish in the top half of the points for the, for the final tomorrow night. Yeah, to be fair, over half the field here has had some involvement with a tow truck tonight. Yeah. So it, it, this is the bit where it's not necessarily do or die, but you can't have silly mistakes. No. Now, Atama Holland, has he had a shocker in that last race. Fortunately for Ralph Godwin, he's a lot further back, so you can see him coming there. But he's right at the front there, and we know, we've seen it a couple of times, where he gets a little bit skitterish at this point. And so Thompson will want a little bit of momentum, little bit of momentum coming off here. Bunter Pierce is not going to hang around. There's a reason they call him Bunter. Oh, as indeed. So let's see, as they get wound up here, should, Thompson should have enough in the 54 car, I think, to pull away. But let's see how it unfolds. Oh, goodness me, four wide off the front. That is not recommended in the um, Speedway New Zealand manual, but it's Bunter Pierce that uh, gets ahead. Atama Holland's car bounces around alarmingly. Stephen Thompson's going backwards big time there, and we've gone yeah, yellow. Yeah, he picked the yellow, I think. Something's up with Thompson's car. It does not 
didn't take off the way you would have thought, and he's rolling to the infield. So I'm picking he's... He's out. He's out. But yes, to be fair, the second row of the grid, that's where your problem lay. The front two, they were side by side. Now, when you're in grid, you need to be an Indian file behind the car you're meant to be. Now, they were in the right grids, but they were car width one way, and they just peeled either side of it. As we watched the replay, courtesy of the Pits TV, and Bunter Pierce got a blinder here. He just threaded the needle and just dove through. Kalen actually, being a little bit out of whack, he, there you go, see it clearly <laughs> as they went over the line. They were, f were well out of shape. Um, unfortunately for Thompson, something is wrong with the 54, so he's, I'm picking he's going to be heavily reliant on a reaper charge tomorrow night, Tony. Very much so. So he's out, which means Atama Holden's on his own off that front row. Jason Kalen in the 12S car and the 67S of Richard Bunter-Pierce tucked in the second row. Uh, the 82 car all on its own as well. Then we go back to the 11, the 5, the other 5 and the 99. So let's see if Atama Holland can uh, lead this field into Turn 1 or whether Jason Kalen will get a slingshot up that inside line and uh, take over the lead of the race. We're about to go green. They increase the revs. We're racing in a way. Holland gets a good advantage. And so does uh, Richard Bunter Pierce in that 67 machine. Takes over second place, looking particularly racy. Sinclair coming through in the 82 car as well. He's got the five of Parkinson glued to his rear. And Ralph Godwin getting on with it from uh, the back of the pack as well. So everyone completes a lap. And Atama Holland leads us. Oh, we've got one round. Sinclair, is it? He's over. Uh, not round, he's... Um, over and... Well, he rolled back onto his wheels. He's just backed it in and clipped the wall. By the looks, he's done a lot of damage. Uh, not to mention the wing and the front suspension. They're just going to be chat to, to Steve. So there's me saying everyone completed a lap. LAUGHTER <laughs> So front first, you reckon? Yes, yeah. young and front first. So we're gonna, we'll no doubt we'll see a replay of that. And uh, this having we chat to Steve. The biggest thing with something like that is it just wins, wins you as we watch them head in. He has gone up the inside and he's clipped the back of Parky. No, we've got another lap to go. That was the first lap. <laughs> that was the yeah. first lap, yeah. We're watching he it. He started to make some progress. Oh. Here we, As, go. here we go, he just bicycled it, yeah, he's just gone in, he's, it's got too much wedge in it, and he's gone in. Oh, airborne, front first. Yeah, and he's tried to shorten the front end of that car up. Hopefully, from his point of view, it hasn't done any chassis damage. Don't know. Yeah, it was a fair air, bit of smoke. Airborne, pretty much square front on into the wall, that's, um, that's going to be... Um, Need a bit of straightening, I would say. As we watch it on the replay, it's kind of cute. It's like it's rolling up, cuddling up to bed. Um, no, so it just, just dug in there, didn't he? Just nah, it's just too much side bite. Yep. And it literally just gripped. And yeah, there's that moment where you're facing the concrete where mm. it doesn't matter where you hit the brakes, you're in the air. Mm. <laughs> Why am I not slowing down? It's because I haven't got any wheels on the ground. And uh, it, yeah, that front corner might need a porter power in the morning. See, this is the bit where you want to finish this last heat and put it back in the box and go home and just clean it tomorrow. But Yeah, if all you've got to do is clean it and put some more fuel in it, you've had a good night. Unfortunately for Stephen Sinclair, that's not going to be the case. They're going to be working long into the night. To be fair to car. Steve, he has absolutely been the fast car out there tonight, without question. Mm. He's probably passed more cars, but then equally as much, he's probably had more accidents in the out of it. They're going to take him, take uh, Steve in the car out of here. So we've gone red. And I'm picking that's just going to, he's going to be winded. That'll be a nasty one. And they'll, uh, they'll get him out of the car in the pits rather than do that on the, uh, on the track. Hard night for a few cars. Very hard night, yeah. And, and to be fair, most of it is this group of drivers you see on the track now. Mm. Uh, they've all had a hard night. Um, to be fair, Having spoken to our ref, one of our uh, referee, he's had a relatively challenging evening too. Yep. In a perfect world, you don't need a referee for a race meeting. 
It's really a perfect world, Dave. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there's a yellow brick road and a gold at the end of the rainbow too, Tony. Yep, that's the one. So yeah. we'll just tow Stephen Sinclair's uh, 82 car back into uh, the pits. Yeah, I guess is the worst thing for Steve is that there's actually you can't really blame anyone else. The car just dug in and he's actually he's okay. It's just when you start looking at all the panel work, they've actually got to remove a bit of panel work off the back of that car so we can squeeze out the window. I mean, yeah. he's, he is a bit of a greyhound, but even greyhounds have their limits. Um, and they'll uh, just remove some panel work off. He'll be winded, no doubt, because that's not the sort of thing you want to do. There's... They are modifiers for Heat 9 of the Garage 16 New Zealand of modified title will restart again. Alrighty, so the uh, car's circulating again now. It'll be an Indian file restart. <laughs> so Atama Holland leading Bunter Pierce, Jason Kalen, Brandon Parkinson. Ralph Godwin, Cassandra Massey, and Bailey Patterson. We're green, we're racing, we're away. And uh, Brandon heads out towards the wall, somewhat alarmingly there off the start. He gathers the car up and he's still in fourth place. Atama Holland's uh, got a little bit of a lead over Bunter Pierce, but Pierce looking quite strong. Heading Kalen, Parkinson, Godwin, Massey, and dropping off the back of the field is Bailey Patterson in a car that looks like it's down on power. It's definitely an issue with that 5C car. I doubt he'll be um, taking too much further part in this race. So Atama Holland in the 48. He's got a healthy enough lead over Pierce in the 67. Jason Kalen in the 12. Brandon Parkinson in the 5. Just a couple of car lengths back and then a couple back to Godwin in the 99. I'll tell you who's, got, who's picked up well, I shouldn't jinx it, but I'll tell you, Jared, who's picked up good points, or, well, not good points, but points in every race tonight, Cassandra Massey. Yeah, just just, just sitting by... back there and just not being involved in other people's chaos. Yeah. That's, I mean, that is part of the trick to this format. It is. Is not being part of the nonsense. She's not the quickest car out there by any means, but she's uh, if she finishes this race, she'll have picked up points in every heat. And by dint of the fact that um, other cars have fallen off the racetrack in front of her, making up places as well. So Bailey Patterson definitely got power issues in that five machine. So Tama Holland there, he's uh, definitely not got power issues. There's plenty of go in that one. He's hauling the 67 of uh, Bunter Pierce. Good battle for third there. Brandon Parkinson coming through on the 12 of Jason Kalen. Parkinson should make that pass stick. And a little bit of smoke off the back of the 99 car as well. Quite sure where that's going to end. So Bailey Patterson pulls off finally, admits defeat in that 5C car. Another lap for Atama Holland. And I really don't think uh, Bunter Pierce is closing on Holland. Parkinson's got ahead of Kalen, but can't uh, make much progress on Pierce. And the 99 machine of Godwin just hasn't got what it takes to close down Kalen in front of him. Massey gets a little sideways out of turn four there but keeps it all going and really I think this race is just going to um, work its way to an inevitable conclusion. I'd be very surprised if there's any major changes in place here between now and the end of the race. I wouldn't rule out Bunter at this point. He's the track coming to him a little bit and he's closer to Holland now than he's been all race. There is that momentum through three and four. It does, doesn't he? Holland moves out a little wide. Pierce has to back out of it. Oh, Holland drifts very wide through two there, and uh, Pierce could have taken advantage but backed out of it. 
He's got a lot of uh, speed going into three there, but he got up into the loose rough stuff and it cost him just one lap to go now. We're in the white zone. Atama Holland, can he bring home for what will be a, a very good victory if he does? He'll be thrilled after the previous heat where he had all those issues. It looks like he's going to do it. Atama Holland, 48 GM, wins the heat from 67 Bunter Pierce and the five of Brandon Parkinson. And I sense that Bunter sacrificed that race win just to bring the car home in one piece. Because now we're getting to that delicate point where some of these guys don't want to wreck gear, they just need points. And that, Tony, was the final heat this evening of our New Zealand Modified Champs, brought to us courtesy of Garage 16. And, and we hopefully we'll just get points. some points up on the screen. There we go. And so after the um, three rounds. Yeah, Mitchell tops us out with Gorge, Brown and Pierce. Then we go back to Fox, McPhee and Jackson. <laughs> Not a lot of points between those guys. Chuck and Brad Lane on 23 and Mike Gurley on 22. Really not a lot of points in that top group. Parkinson only one point back. As we move through Holland, he, he really picked up a lot of points. He needed that. And he's put him up there with Astor and Corbett, White, uh, Lennon and uh, Massey. That's what you're talking about, Massey. They're just accumulating points. That's kept it in contention. Still two more heats to go. Absolutely. She carries on like that. She'll disqualify by default. She will. Um, she won't have to go there. We go through the rest of the points there. There will be some positional changes tomorrow. Um, we're going to get to see how many cars come back. Obviously, got one or two broken and one that's not coming back at all. Indeed. So, but we'll be back tomorrow night along with our um, stock cars, super stocks, and saloons. Um, and of course, along with that big final at the end of the night. Um, thank you to everyone for coming along tonight. Hope you've uh, enjoyed your race meeting here at Coke and Tools at Woodford Glen. Thank you for streaming with the Pits TV. Um, hope that's worked well for you. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. I'm here with the winner of the last heat, Atama Holland. It was absolutely epic, mate. How are you feeling out there tonight? Uh, yeah, no, come together for the last race, definitely. Um, yeah, we've had a few upsets through the season. Um, yep, we're all hoping to get back on track now. That's right. I remember in the, um, the it was either the Canary or the South Island Champs, you had a, a bit of an accident in the end. You weren't sure if you're going to get the car up and running and ready for the New Zealand Champs. So definitely awesome um, job that you did to get it back on track. Yeah, definitely, mate. Yeah, we thought that was it for our season pretty much. Um, but yeah, nah, we're here. Made it. That's a good thing, eh? That's yes, right. You're looking good on points. So bring on tomorrow night. And thanks very much for having a chat to us. And um, and uh, we'll let you get back to that driver's meeting. So you have to go. But um, thanks very much to Tama Holland for winning the last eight. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers. Cheers. All right. And uh, we're going to cross over to Aaron now. Let's check out some points. Okay, so we're just over here at the uh, results board. So at the moment, they haven't quite got all of the points up, but we know that uh, Jacob Mitchell, Newton Gorge, and Luke Brown are leading the table at the moment. Um, just all provisional though. So um, once everyone gets absolutely everything added up and, and all I'll sorted out, obviously the results on. will be, they will be posted on obviously on the Facebook pages you know and the various can, social number. media. Yeah. You can go along and check all that I'll out. So before we go into tomorrow night, you'll know exactly who's in what position but an absolutely awesome night of action for these qualifiers it's been absolutely brilliant uh, to be here at uh, Coke and Woodford Glen